What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Good Anime Palette Podcast. This is episode number 55. Winter has left the building, but we are going to do some spring cleaning today. But do you happen to have a moment of your time, maybe five minutes, to talk about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Because, you know, Easter. But, but, if that doesn't appeal to you, maybe uh, let's spend a couple of hours talking about weeb shit. Uh, I'm your co-host, Jason. Joining me, as always, and as usual, is Dust Forced Will over here. Is 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 the Easter like period also like, coinciding with the period of Lent, when people need to give up something? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right. So, what are you prepared to give up then? I, I, actually, is, is it how, do you, how long do you give up shit for? Is it like two weeks, four weeks? I forgot how long you're supposed to give up something over the period of Lent. Um. One thing we don't want you guys to give up, though, would be anime and manga. Please don't even think about that, because uh, then, you know, all this content that we're trying to pump out would be meaningless to you. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, you go through the uh, doldrums of giving up something that's precious to you, um, and hopefully that doesn't mean that you know, you're giving up anime or manga. Are we talking about Roman Catholic? Uh, honestly, like, I am not versed at all in any form of religion, so... But but let's just say Roman Catholic, right? Okay. Uh, 2nd of March till... April 14th for 2022. For 2023, it is February 22nd till April 6th. Damn. So people have been already giving up shit for almost a month and a half. Well, at so, least this is according to Wikipedia. But fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't realize it was that long. I thought it was just only a couple of weeks. Uh, a month and a half is a long time to give something up. A lot of my friends always give up chocolate or yeah. like meat. Every, a lot of the friends that I have are like the ones who are like trying to do ja- uh, dry January, like after having a heavy Christmas and heavy New Year's, yeah. and then afterwards they realize, yeah, I can't, I can't do dry January, so they push it off to Lent instead to use Lent as the period to give up alcohol. Um, not a lot of them. Oh, yeah. alcohol, see. alcohol is a is a common one too. Yeah, yeah the yeah, ones yeah, I yeah. usually get are like alcohol, snacks, smoking, just stuff that you know is generally like you know bad for your health and try and live a, a cleaner lifestyle. But I think like. There's always like periods of relapse for the for those for those people. Not 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 throwing any shade or whatnot. It's just it's hard giving up some vices in life. But anime and manga is not a vice, and nor will and I are medical professionals giving you medical advice. But we are here to give you the rundown on our main discussion topic, which is uh, anime closet cleanup, as well as a good dose of news. Yeah. So this will be the fourth. Uh, closet cleaning that we'll be doing. Uh, we did the draw several months ago, and then uh, it, it took us several months later to actually get started on watching anything. So, you know, little disclaimer: we may or may not have finished everything we're supposed to watch, but we definitely. Why, why are you won- putting yeah. us? Why are you putting us on blast, bro? It's I mean, it's it's par for the course. It's it's the standard GAP disclaimer. And definitions, right? Exactly. Like, we have to do that. It's not like I would go against my nature when the very show has created the person I am now. So I have to live Wait, by it. I help contribute to this monster. Yeah. Damn it. So, hey, I mean, you make the rules. You can break the rules if you want. Wait, we make the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, fair. Fair that, enough, that, right? That, that's super fair. Yeah. So, um, happy but, Easter, I guess. I mean, I, th- I think this is coming out technically before Easter, but... We won't just just right before, I think. Yeah, but we won't see anybody. Well, not see, but like, we, you won't hear us through uh, the Easter break. So yeah. happy Easter, everyone! Bunnies and chocolate eggs and whatnot. I don't, I don't know what else people are supposed to do. Over just Easter. don't drop the ball, you know. Asagi drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, little, ah, little foreshadowing ah. for what we're going to be talking about later in the main discussion. Before that, though, whilst we have you know been watching or at least trying to watch the stuff that you know, aim for the, oh, the cleanup. Oh, uh, real quick, by yeah. the way. Speaking of that. Uh, I'm really scared, Will, that winter is gone. I haven't finished all of my seasonals that I kind of wanted to. Okay. And spring is right around the fucking corner, dude. Here, here, here is what I'm going to say. How many shows did you actually like start watching for winter? Because we talked about a lot of shows, right? But how many of those were you committed to actually trying to finish? Right? Like For me, mainly, I was just going to finish two, which was Bungo Stray Dogs Season 4 and Vinland Saga Season 2. Everything else was a little bit more auxiliary. Um, like optional kind of thing? Yeah. like I mean, look, Campfire Cooking is great, but it's also not something that I'm dying to to crush every week. 
Um, I don't even remember what else is coming out in this in, in this in this season that's about to end. But I, what, like, how many do you have right now that is like you were you were watching? Maybe you got like three four episodes in, and they haven't really caught up in a month or two. So even though we're not talking about what we've been watching or reading, is what we would have been watching. You know, I guess because I am guilty of like not doing a lot of seasonal work. Uh, in terms of, like, watching seasonals. And it's mainly because I've been actually watching a lot of, like, live-action stuff recently. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm not going to knock that. I yeah. Mean, it, we all have busy lives. If we there, all if have there our is, like, any any instance where I want to recommend a live-action, um, I finally got watching uh, got to watching uh, First Love. Um, that's uh, that live-action uh, J-drama that's on Netflix. Uh, that's es- essentially inspired by two Hitata, uh, uh, Hikaru Itata songs, First Love and Hatsukoi. Fucking great. That's the, 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 Dude, the, the First Love? That's yeah. like one of her first songs ever. Yeah. And Holy so, shit. Yeah. And do you remember how long ago that song came out? In like 1999. Perfect. Do you remember how old she was when she was when she released that song? I would say like 16, 17. Jesus Christ, you got to correct as well. She was born 1983. She was 16 when First Love came out. Like, that's one. Like, I didn't even realize how young she was when she released the song. But two, holy fuck, that song is fucking 24 years old. But my favorite Yutaira Hikaru song is on her next album. I think that album that you're talking about, First Love, is called Automatic, I think. Yep, that's the one. The second album contains my favorite song by her called Traveling. Okay. Yeah. My favorite song is still Simple and Clean cuz I'm a, a f- I'm a I'm a fucking Kingdom Hearts diehard cuz you're just simple and clean. Hey man, I'm going to die on this hill. It's a it's a hill worth dying on. Okay, so to answer your earlier question about uh the seasonals. So Buddy Daddies I technically started on hold a couple episodes in uh Trigun I dropped. Tomochan I've got to 7. You know what's a shame about Trigun though? It's like it it looks amazing, and like the sequences where you have the slow mo 3D is absolutely beautiful. But it's hard to care for the story. It's in fact like I don't even really know like how much of it is even connected to the original series, like the original adaptation. Um, I've I, I think just literally two episodes. That's it. I think I don't even know you got that far. Uh, I think I watched a little bit more than you, yeah. But maybe yeah. by like another episode or two. I on- I checked. I only finished one seasonal, like from beginning to end. Which was? C- can you just take a wild guess? Shot Bruh, in the dark. I, I don't even remember. Uh... <sighs> okay, technically I also finished Eminence and Shadow, but that was a double yeah. cur. Yeah. So I guess two. That, that's probably the one I would have guessed. But. And that's not the one I'm talking about. It aired. Oh, is it the? It, it's it's the farming one. Yes, it did. Farming, yeah, correct. In the, farming is a kind of. Um, yeah, farming is a kai. Farming is a kai. Yeah, farming life in another world or something. That was the only show currently that I finished for winter 2023. Oh, but, but we know why. You just wanted to see this guy Stardew Valley the shit out of his fucking it is village. So Harvest Moon Stardew Valley, I fucking love it. But I will finish a bunch of stuff because we have Easter break. Uh, so that is our brief rundown of how we feel about winter 2023. Uh, I not, do not think... to say that it's bad. It's definitely good. It's just a lot of shit has happened over the past couple of months for us, and we have not really been as um, as able to tackle this this ever going issue of not putting stuff on hold, not putting stuff on plan to watch, and then not end up watching it. Um, yeah. I mean, I haven't finished a single seasonal. I think the furthest I've gone for anything would be Bungo Stray Dogs and Vinland Saga, both on episode four. I've even watched past episode one, Tokyo Revengers. Maybe there is a BP topic that you and I have recorded that kind of talks about something like this. Yep. Which is scheduled to release. I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, soon. Yeah. I, I think actually it is scheduled to release next week. Yeah. Not the upcoming one. Actually, yeah. it's it's in the pipeline, guys. That 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 that's all we're here to talk about. So, but yeah, that's enough about you know what we did and didn't watch over the last couple of weeks. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, news story, news section. Here we go. So, um, well, we talked uh, about some fluffy stuff last time around. Mm-hmm. I think we want to start off this episode with some fluffy ass news, right? Because uh, there's a there's a certain show that you really really like, the Hori, the Mia. I don't. Really, 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 really love it. I just love it to bits, man. Hey, that, that that's that's more than that's more than just really, really. <laughs> okay, so Hori Mia is 
a clover work production anime production probably in recent memory i would say a very very hype and very very well done rom-com and that's just my opinion i finished the manga they have announced in to premiere in july so 2023 that should be summer yeah uh they said july 2023 that they will have horimiya peace which is as in uh, a piece of the pie a piece one piece piece not peace as in yeah. like love and peace i think the original intention was um because they essentially condensed the whole horimiya story into one season um uh, but that also does mean that a lot of stuff gets left out Hor- horimiya peace is literally just piecing the stories that weren't animated in the original series yeah because right? that was one of my original complaints i guess is that towards like the i guess latter third like the past the halfway mark to maybe like to like a little bit before the end is all slice of life stuff that kind of enhances and is more comedy than the more drama event love story that the anime horimiya is all about but it seems to me that horimiya is quite popular very successful it seems and to the point where they decided to hey clover works let's go round two it's not even just that too like literally like the season before in fact like like three weeks from this recording, they're re-airing the original run of Horimiya in Japan. So leading up into Horimiya Peace. So it's just, you know, pe- people can catch that, that that second experience of watching Horimiya all over again and then fill in the blanks with Horimiya Peace. It seems that they're keeping it very consistent as well. It's Cloverworks again. They're bringing back a lot of the cast, a lot of the directors as well. So just it, it sounds like if you've been on this Harmia train, you love the manga and you like the way it was adapted in the first place, but felt that there was a lot of stuff missing because of how quickly and condensed it was. It, it all got adapted. Well, if you just want to yeah. say my name, just just say it, because that because Jason Cloverworks heard you. Yeah, I know. And they're doing everything they can to please you, except that you know if they were to do that, then they would definitely redo Wonder Egg all over again. However. They have not done that. We do not have that news to give, nor are we saying that there is any news on that front. But uh, if, anybody from Cloverworks is listening, please, please, please redo, please redo Cloverworks. Uh, no, please do uh, redo Wonder Egg Priority. Well, if you have to redo Cloverworks in order to do Wonder Egg Priority, I think that's not a bad priority. Okay. All right. Our second news story is a bit prophetic because I predicted this also probably everyone under the sun to be very fair. Kodansha, I think in the past couple of months, has been pulling their digital manga, whether it is from Bookwalker, uh, Azuki, which is another uh, manga streaming service, as well as a number of different places. And they kind of, I think also Crunchyroll Manga, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And they kind of said, hey, uh, we are pulling all this stuff, but uh, stay De- tuned. Yeah, details to be announced later on. Which everyone just could be like, okay, just just say you're doing a manga streaming service. And guess what? They are now. Yeah. In the U.S., though, only for now, K-Manga is Kodansha's online manga platform. Exclusively Kodansha as well. So it's not like an amalgamation of other um, publications. This is just exclusively Kodansha manga series. So if it's like Manga Up for Square Enix, which is their sort of uh, app, then Jump Plus Manga Plus is for Shonen Jump. Now K Manga is for Kodansha. Yeah. So there's going to be approximately 400 manga titles at launch, which in this service also includes, you know, the simul publications of a lot of different series. Which includes, l- I mean, Kodansha you know, is a large publishing company but yeah. for hundo off the bat that's insane dude. i mean they were probably just waiting to have everything ready to just all in one go blast and like think about it this way too the launch of the service and you have this much ready for people to consume that's a that's a pretty good way to launch your platform and that also means that they have been this has been in the making for quite some time which i always consider it a positive that the fact that digital manga is available accessible and simul pub too right yeah so, so- Existing series would include things like Seven Deadly Sins, Fire Force, Jahaya Fudu. Uh, Samuel Pub stuff would also include Eden Zero, Blue Lock, Seven Deadly Sins, and unfortunately, Rent a Girlfriend and Don't uh, Don't Toro Nakataro. I think a sign of affection is also on that list. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't remember. But yeah, look, this is this is a new way for you to consume your your manga now. You don't have to, you know, 
buy hardback. Uh, actually, I don't even know in terms of like the extent of the services that are provided by K-Manga. So far, it's only releasing in the U.S., so it's to be seen whether this would be released in other locations. In the same way that like Jump Plus, Manga Plus is like only available in certain locations, and certain locations have more availability for certain series as well. So let's let's see how this rolls up, but it, it looks pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it could be just... a. Uh a soft open in the grand scheme of things, and then they, they slowly expand. I mean, at the end of the day, Kodansha owns the rights to their own IPs, so they kind of can do what they want, or at least when the license expires or the agreements that they have made. Can I just say real quick, though, K-Manga, not, not the best title. I did see that when I saw the news article on the docket, I thought for a minute that K is coming back. The K anime series, which I really do not like. Oh no, I was thinking like webtoon manhua type stuff. Well, I mean, look, like it's it it it's possible it's possible that it is a, a working title. I I hope it is going to change at some point. But look, if it's just called K, then it's called K. K but, manga specifically, yeah. But what is also okay is our next news story, which talks about, of all things, would you consider it a comic? Will a uh, comic? Graphic novel, I guess yeah, yeah. it depends on like how like you you know, determine like the meaning of those specific words. Yeah, I think yeah, I would it's say the same way where it's like, what is anime, right? Oh my god, someone trolled me a while ago. It would be like, yo, so anime is just the drawings, right? They're just cartoons, right? And I knew well, that in a way, it's true. No, it's true. But then I it's was in like, the same way where it's like Shrek in Japan is anime. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm not, like, denying that at all. But it was just the intent of this person was to trigger me. And then I was just like, you know the answer. You're reading manga right now on your phone. You're flipping through it. What are you doing? Well, I mean, like, it's not hard to trigger you when you're trying to attack your beloved anime and manga, right? Like, you're going to, you know, protect the shit out of it. But all on the Western front, though... There is a I, I'll just call it graphic novel series that Will and I actually really like a lot. Well, you like the graphic novel. I like the movie. I like both, to yeah. be fair. I, the movie, yeah. So we're talking about uh, Scott Pilgrim. If anybody is uh, confused as to what that is, maybe you're too young because it is kind of old. But not the movie, right? The movie came out almost 10 years ago, man. Edgar Wright. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, dude, like Michael Sarah has aged like twenty five years. Holy shit! Since. You're right. Oh my I'm, god. I'm just I'm just pulling it up now just to see. Like, oh, 2010. So actually, thirteen years. Okay. That's when the movie came out. So the original live action film in uh, 2010, you said, has now announced by Netflix that the cast is going to return for the Scott Pilgrim anime series. That is going to be produced by, well, the Monkey Boys, Science Saru. So, uh, boys and girls, actually. Um, Basically, Ong Young Choi. It's interesting because Ong Young Choi, as well as Science Saru, has worked in collaboration with a lot of different international studios on, like, global like and also western uh animation projects. So, it's not that crazy to see them actually do something for, like a Western product, which is Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Um, on top of that, they're also bringing in a lot of the uh, old cast, like the original cast of Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the live action movie. So now, you've got, you know, literally you everybody. Anna that Kendricks, in. Audra Plaza. You got um, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. Who's the Knives True? Uh, Ellen. I forgot her name. And then you get um, Kevin McAllister's brother. Right. Uh. Well, oh, oh. Yeah. Ellen Wong as Knives True. You also have Brie Larson as uh, Envy Adams. Oh, uh, yeah, Mary Elizabeth Winstead that. as Ramona. Kieran Culkin as well yeah, as yeah, well exactly. was, was fucking great. Ka- I really love uh, M- Macaulay Culkin's brother. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. It's kind of crazy to get that cast because they kind of all got pretty big in their own respective ways, right? But hey, Netflix has the money, has the pull. Good for you. Uh, Brian O'Malley, I think, is the name of the author of of Scott Pilgrim. He's attached to the project. Sign Saru. Um, we talk, Will and I talked about this literally last night when we were playing board games, and it was just, I think, is a good fit. But whether or not it pans out has yet to be seen because Sign Saru's track record has it's been, been kind of really, spotty. Yeah. It's, to it's, be it's, fair. it's been rough uh, the last two years. I think like. The last production that I could say confidently that I really, really enjoyed was Keep Your Hands Off Isaacin. 
Uh, and that came out like 2019, 2020. Was Inuo done by Science Sorrow? It was, but we haven't watched it. We haven't watched it yet. Just from the trailers, it looks cool but at the same time it's like i think the audience is kind of divided in that it's like it's a rock opera but it's not really it's super like artsy, ancient historical artsy. but it's also not really it's it's just it's just that kind of like i guess creative flow that science hero has always gone with and so is yuasa and satoshi khan is fun. yeah satoshi so khan is smiling at us right now it's 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 hard to say how it's going to look and also the fact that like I actually don't know if they've released any information about the Japanese cast. Now, understanding, of course, that it's, oh. you know, a Western property, of course, you're going to be trying your best to be able to get back, you know, your Mary Winsteads and your 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 um, your your Michael Sarah's and Obby Plaza's and everyone to do the voices for the English, um, which I would assume would be the quote unquote original language. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So do you think you will listen to the Japanese dub for this? I'd have to. I would. I would definitely check it out. I mean, it's it's just because of the fact that like it's Sain Saru as a Japanese studio, but at the same time also working in a you know a, a a Western property. In the same way that you know when I was watching Batman Ninja, I watched both it in both of it in in English and Japanese. And for Arcane, yeah. I think we watched it in English. We also watched it in multiple languages too, just because they had so many languages. And yeah. actually. If I recall, Will, when we watched it, it was actually pretty good, all the dubs in general, the ones that at least we checked out. To like, be fair, though, they put a lot of money into that thing, so it's like it made sense that they were able to pull off like that crisp sinking of, of, of voice acting. Uh, who knows if they're going to be able to achieve the same thing here. I mean, this is a pretty big deal you know with netflix and universal pictures both coming together to put this together getting the full original cast to do the english voices um yet to see who's going to do the japanese one um i'm, I'm just more interested to see how it looks like if it's going to retain like the original sort of style from the graphic novel if it's gonna you know sudden star is gonna have a little bit of its own touch to it so it's gonna look a bit like uh pantying and stalking, kind Penny of. Garter, yeah, uh, Penny and Garter Belt. Uh, Penny stalking the Garter Belt. Yeah. So, our next news story. So, hey, we will definitely watch it. Is what we're trying to say for for Scott Pilgrim. Our next news story, though, was something that actually came out of nowhere, but I'm kind of excited about it. Which is, my anime list decided to publish a you. Should re- uh, that basically an ultimate list of manga recommendations, which on their website is called the You Should Read This Manga 2023, which they the reader's choice. Yeah, and they uh, they say on their website, uh, you should read this manga, which is kind of like manga ga sugoi, basically of the but the Western version is a yearly manga discovery list created for and by the international fans, and they have essentially a little number of categories such as uh we should take credit for this well yeah. this should be anime yeah right uh best for beginners unique story and art as well as they have uh, access to, to tell you where to buy these who publish them so on so forth so um at the end of the day i think uh having such a you know a resource is always good especially on a big website that a lot of weaves you know traverse my anime list, right? Yeah, it's it's also like kind of interesting that they finally got around to doing this because not to toot our own horn as well, but a lot of the stuff that's on this list we've already talked about or will be in our upcoming, like for example, our upcoming ASAP three, um, our other uh, sort of like retrospectives on like horror and whatnot. To take. For example, like Blood on the Trails is is there, Dan to Dan's there. Uh, Fierden is there, which Atelier, which we'll be talking about hopefully. A sign point. of affection, Dungeon Meshi. A bride's story is one that I think is very underrated. But uh, Insomniacs After School and Skip and Loafer, that's airing literally in the next week. Akane Banashi, which I still haven't gotten around to reading yet. Um, but look, like, I think like as, as much as just me saying like, oh, we already knew a lot about this stuff, it's also good to see that like my anime list is putting together this specific resource for people who may not actually know how to go about reading manga or getting into manga in the first place. The fact that they have all these sort of, you know, specific but also quite well-rounded and open subcategories, you know, like the, for example, like the best for beginners and a unique art like they think they try and keep us varied so that if you do want to go into manga or you just you know don't want to watch anywhere anime and see what's 
upcoming that could potentially be a good anime adaptation. This is a pretty good, you know, sort of like one stop resource for you to use. Uh, the choices that they have, I think, for people who are in the know, like for Will and I or others that either at least are in tune with manga news and the latest and greatest or read a lot of manga or won't be surprised at these selections. But I think at the end of the day, this website, this resource, this list is not for us. It is essentially for people to get motivated to read manga, which for us will mm. personally... I mean, I mean, how much of an aficionado would you say that you're into manga? Because there's not, there's definitely a lot of stuff on there that like you and I have never come across before. I wouldn't say that it's like specifically for people who are like newbies to manga or like don't know how to go into manga. Like people like who are the seasoned veterans or who have already read loads of manga could still go back to this and oh, use yeah. it as a resource. You know, I mean, okay, sorry, I, I there was a little I, I, there was a little yeah. element of gatekeeping. No, 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 I, I wasn't trying to do that. I'm sorry if I implied that. I'm just saying that you a lot of people will not be just like how we were not surprised at some of the choices that were made. They're all good choices, by the way. The ones that we have mentioned, we all thoroughly approve of that. Yeah, I mean, like for example, it, 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 it's like if you want to get into like anime um, or just manga in general, they have stuff like Mashal, Blue Lock, Hydra Number Eight, Dress Up Darling, Tomodachi Game. Great stuff to start off with. Stuff that they wanted to get animate. You've been calling for Dan to Dan. People who also have contributed to this platform also agree. Uh, Sakamoto days. Uh, I'm I'm iffy about that, but I would also be like, you know, if I saw an adaptation for it, I would not be surprised. The one that would be actually interesting to see would be the ones in terms of like unique story and art. Like for example, they have uh, the hundred girlfriends on yep. that list. And is it unique story or unique art for you? Unique story for sure. Mm. Uh, I think. On, the, on that list, there are several that I want to highlight because I think here, I think um, uh, Taco P's Original Sin, which is the first one on that list, is I think 16 chapters on Jump Plus Manga Plus for free. And it is an amazing like short story that ha is just wild and you should read it, uh, listeners and Will. Uh, I have read a lot of these. Like I Want to Be a Wall is uh, the Slice of Life one, which is about more gender identity, fluidity, uh, the witch and the... Was it the witch and the beast? I keep forgetting its name. Maju to Yaju, which has an anime uh, adaptation. It's just really bloody about killing witches. Yeah, Witch and the Beast is also in the unique story art list as well. Yep. And, yeah, and Wand Dance, which is yeah. also on this list. And so I've, there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, if, if you've... You, you feel like you've read enough manga and don't really know what else you want to read. Even your linguistics one is on here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked that, you know, there is a platform where, like, if, for example, you just have read a bunch of stuff, you don't know what to read next, or you maybe don't really care about manga, but have maybe a little inkling to see what's up, check this platform out. It's cool that they have it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, at the end of the day, a very good thing. You know what's also very good? Taxes. It's tax season, baby. And you know what? When you do taxes, you need an anime girl to do your taxes for you. And uh, unfortunately, that's not going to be able to happen anymore because there was previously a viral visual novel about doing taxes that has now been removed from Steam. Uh, the game itself is called Tax, he tax Heaven 3000. Uh, and, um, you know, it basically uh, was used as a platform to help prepare for you to do your 2022 U.S. federal tax returns, uh, which you can accomplish by interacting with a pink girl anime girl. Um, yeah. So this new story, I guess I would say the developers, is going to receive the illustrious GAP award of Baka of the Month. Well, it, it's it's also like unfortunate because like their intentions in the beginning were for good, but the outcome of it was incredibly like short sighted, and therefore we have to you know give this unfortunate bit of news the Baka of the month because whilst you can use it for more sort of 
casual comedic purposes there are people that actually register their social security numbers and other private personal details onto the platform which you know the developers come out and say like we don't actually you know store this we delete this shit but you know there's, there's always risks whenever you're putting in information on a platform that's connected to the fucking internet i think teaching people how to file taxes is good honestly if you had to go through an anime 2d girl avenue i think that's fine but yeah you gotta be you know common sense you gotta be on point and make sure that you don't put stuff that you don't want to have it either be leaked or out there is yeah. what i'm saying it's it's very clear the, the it, within the game description uh, as it appears um that it does not actually file your taxes it's just a very comical way of showing you how to go about doing it i think the main question is users were kind of concerned as they never really explained the developers never really explained how they're actually going to handle all that personal data. So in sort of like common sense, and I hate to say that because it just makes it seem like people who didn't do it are dumb and that's not what I'm trying to go for. But there are going to be people that kind of just, you know, take it for granted and just go ahead and put in very, very sensitive personal information. And that's that's not good. Like you, If you don't know what you're doing and you don't understand the repercussions that come from it, just... Like, I'm I'm glad that they took the game off. I mean, for 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 memes, you know, for shits and giggles, this is hilarious. But in terms of like real world shit, bro, this could have been catastrophic for people. Yeah, and imagine calling the IRS, at least in America, calling the IRS and be like, "Uh, sir, where are your tax returns? You never filed your taxes." Um, excuse me, but um, so I I, lo- I logged on the Valve, right, and then um I. Um, bought this game off Steam, uh, and there's a there's a girl named uh, an employee named Innes who said that uh, had to put in my social security. She's from Tax Heaven Three Thousand. Don't you guys know this? Like it's like a one stop resource to be able to do your tax returns, and I don't want to file it, 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 it no, inadequately. No. I thought I filed it. I beat the game. It, I yeah. Did. So you can imagine like the the, the potential fallout for. One, putting your public information, your your private information on like a public platform. Again, when I say public, I mean it's on the internet. It's easy for someone to just jack that shit from you. And two, if you actually take it as a real resource, you end up not filing your taxes. <laughs> yeah, so do your taxes, please, guys. It's It's grueling aggravating sometimes or tedious unless you're in hong kong it's pretty straightforward to do your taxes in hong kong for some reason the u.s just makes it like so many fucking like hoops and hurdles to be able to actually file your taxes it's like how do i do it do it yourself what if i do it wrong like turbo tax and that's why all these services are just so successful because filing your taxes is such a complicated thing yeah that's why it's always great to find a friend who you know does know how to do their taxes or is a you know pretty good at auditing shit. I've got a couple friends who legitimately when tax season comes up just posts on Instagram. If you need help, drop me a link and they'll do it at like a minimum service compared to, you know, doing it with like Aflac and TurboTax and whatever platforms they are to do your, you know, to, to file your taxes. Um so yeah. Um I I actually kind of wish I was able to play it just to see like how legitimate it would be. And of course, it's like, I'm not going to put in any of my personal information. But at the same time, it's also like, I don't know if I would be able to go about doing this game because it seems that it's very specifically the done. US. Yeah. And whereas like, I'm not a US citizen. I don't have a social security number. I've never filed taxes in America. I only file taxes America. here in Hong Kong. You, on the other hand. Yeah. Like, what about me? Well, do you think that this would have been a useful resource for you to use? Do you think you would have been like down the download pink haired anime girl tax filer to just be like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I'm going to play a game instead. It's going to show me how to do my taxes. No. It's a terrible idea. Just, no. Just, just play it for fun. Okay? Don't, no. Do not take games off of Steam or any platform as a legitimate real world resource unless you're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. Then, yes, you can build. No, I'm not going to go any further because that that could actually be a lot of lawsuits if I just say go ahead and use Roller Coaster Tycoon. No, to no, yeah, don't finish that sentence. Don't finish that sentence, Will. 
Uh, you know, actually, when I was a kid, I actually thought, you know what, this shit's fun. I want to design roller coasters when I grow up. Now oh, I realize yeah. that's like legitimately not the case. What you do learn though is you learn how to program from playing uh, roller coaster tycoon. Uh, I play a uh, sim theme park or something. Sim City? Sim- no, no. There's like a theme park one that like before but, but- roller coaster tycoon, and uh, I always remember jacking up uh, the salt for the french fries and increasing the amount of ice for the sodas just to get the the most amount of uh profit possible i mean how, did you did you charge entry for your toilets as well i don't think so did you're missing out because people gotta pee yeah but they can just pee for free pee for free pee for free bro son. oh man you're missing out on those 10 cents per entry man Golden Shower 3000 is in stores today. I'm oh, just kidding. Okay. That won't get taken off. That Steve will get so taken fast. super fast. All right. So that is the end of our new segment. Uh, we are kind of light on content for the first half. Will, it's, is there well, anything you want to? Well, I, I mean, like, it, it just comes with the fact that, like, we have spring right around the corner so i think like in terms of news it is a little bit on the lighter side because of the fact that most of the stuff has already released like a lot of series that's coming out in the coming days if not already released has like broadcasted like two three four weeks ago about oh this is the voice cast this is the studio this is the confirmation data when they're going to be releasing and what time they're going to be airing and whatnot so that is already like 90 percent of news pretty much out the way the only stuff that's you know really worth noting would be like light novel gets anime adaptation for 2024 or there's going to be a Wait, spin-off manga the for the light novel got yeah, anime adaptation the light novel oh shit. of all light novels it's it's essentially uh an omnibus of like 200 million pages uh, and it's just literally one word from every light novel ever made and all pieced together monogatari style because it's a story. Holy fuck! <laughs> Would oh you my. buy that? <laughs> Hell no! God damn it! <laughs> Will you even need to ask? Will God damn it! Right. Um. I guess that. Why, why don't we just sort of like briefly sort of go into like what we're going to be discussing? No. For well, the... you know what we're gonna do? It's gonna be all gas, no brakes. Fuck it, let's go. Okay. You ready cool. to go? Yeah. Why don't we do it? So um, no break music, no uh, moment of interruption. Sorry, Will. Besides the one I just did to Will. And you're back listening to the second half of today's episode because I'm gonna I am gonna timestamp this. Uh, we have just gone over the news. We've gone over stuff that we have and have not watched or read, and we are going straight into. Our discussion topic today, which is the fourth iteration of the anime closet cleanup. You should totally put in the break music now and to call me out. You totally should, by the way. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, we will not go over what uh, anime closet cleanup is because this oh, is that, the fourth. That, that is very like un GAP. I know. But uh, it's also like y'all heard it three times already. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to hear it the fourth. We're going to probably upload all the rules or all the how it works on uh, our website. It is still work in progress because Will and I have been a little bit lazy because we kind of want to do all of these episodic rules and definitions and put them all on one page. Yeah, just, you know, like the way that uh, my anime list is condensing all the different categories of manga that you can go and consume, we're also going to be condensing all the rules, disclaimers, and explanations for the general episodic formatted um, like series that we have, so that would be like ASAP, cl- uh, Closet Cleanup, the Gotta Watch Em Alls, and whatever other you know long-standing running series that we have throughout every season of the GAP. So just a refresher for our cleanup list as well as our picks. Will's cleanup list five 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 from his w- uh, p- uh, plan to watch list is Usagi Drop FLCL. Pula, fully uh, fully Cooley as well, aka Fully Cooley, uh, Madoka Magica, Bento, and Darling in the Franks. On my plan to watch for Will's cleanup is Aldenoa Zero, Data Live Season One, Makui When the Promise Flower Blooms, Makia, Makia Fuck Me, Citrus, and Record of Grand Crest 
war. And from the hat that we uh, drew uh, to be able to do this cleanup, I ended up picking out uh, Fully Kuli and Usaki Drop, followed by Alt No Zero and Makia when the plum, uh, Promised Flower blooms. For Jason, in his two separate lists, on my side, uh, he was drawing uh, from five. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, known as uh, Kankutsuo, Batum, with three O's, Penguin Drum, Nobunaga Concerto, and Charlotte, followed by the next five from his own list, Sekano, How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend, Detroit Metal City, Drifters, High School DxD, and Into the Forest of Firefly's Light, of which he picked out Nobunaga Concerto and Charlotte, followed by Drifters and High School DxD. So I think what we're going to do in terms of like how we'll run through each of these series, you can go one by one. Yeah, you just go back and forth, yeah. But in my side, I'm going to start off from like the least interested versus, uh, 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 like slash like not as like appealing to me through initial inspection, followed by, wow, I watched every single damn minute, every single damn episode of this series or movie, and I want to spend enough time near the end of this episode to just gush over it. I'm not sure if you're going to go the same way. We don't have to basically do the same format, but I feel like there's also some series on your side that you're like, this is not what I expected. I don't really know how I feel about it, or I don't really know what things I have to say. And those things may or may not be good or bad. Uh, and then you probably have some stuff that you're like, this kind of caught me off guard. And uh, I, 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 I really am glad that I drew this out of the hat because it was a fun ass time. Uh, the order that I have in the docket is the order that I'm going to go with. Cool. Okay. Um, so why don't we go off on your side then? Let's let's start off with your first series that you're going to be talking about, which is Charlotte. Right. So Charlotte is an anime original premiered in summer 2015, produced by PA Works. Remember the name because it's going to show up again. Yep. As a current MAL score of 7.75, rank 1029, popularity 65. Which is insane, right? Okay, 7.75 as a MAL score is already like above, pretty, yeah, pr- pretty, pretty damn good. good, right? Way above average um, if we take 7 as the average. But 65 for popularity ranking? 1.5 that... million members. Right. Like, that's fucking insane and it's an anime original too so it i i don't know if other people look at it the same way but when i see an anime original and to have it be that popular it 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 just puts a smile on my face because it means it's not from a source someone had to you know concept the idea and of course the original creator of you know the manga or light novel obviously concepted their ideas too but it's just that I have a soft spot for anime originals is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, especially if it's one that where it's like it's done well and it sticks in your memory, then you can always go back to it and be like, yep, that was a good ass anime. Because adaptations, yeah, they can be amazing. But, you know, if the source was amazing from the first place and it was handled well, then you would expect for it to be a good anime adaptation. Originals are always hard to pull off. And the fact that this... Whilst the score is not super, super high, the fact that there was a lot of people that logged their votes and their watch times onto this, like, top 65, over 1.5 mil. It's fucking insane. That's kind of how I went about putting this onto uh, your your draw because <clears throat> I, I didn't want to go just by uh, mal scores because we have been burned by those plenty of times. So I thought, why don't we just see something that is like insanely popular, has done okay in terms of the ranking, and into the, and, the, the raw score. And it's on my plan to watch list as well. And so, so therefore, it's like, there you go. So I, I knew about Charlotte as well, but I don't really like know the plot. So yeah, we, Perhaps maybe go into a little bit of like a, mm-hmm, a synopsis. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Will, uh, you've heard of a manga called My Hero Academia, have you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So in in My Hero Academia, they have superheroes and they have uh, abilities called quirks, right? Now, if you were to take the literal definition of quirk, do you know roughly what that means? Like strange, weird? Right. Yeah. And probably not perfect, right? Like it's kind of off kilter not necessarily in a negative connotation it's just unorthodox right yeah. so if you take that definition and put that into the world of charlotte it is literal because in this world you get high school kids who develop superpowers however 
the superpowers are not as cool as you think. Okay. For example, the main character, uh, which my na- his name is Yu, but um, Y U U, but I forgot his last name. Otosaka. Yeah. Yu Otosaka. He has the ability to possess uh people for like five seconds. So you might be like, oh, that's kind of cool, but his body just like they switch for like those five seconds. And it's just kind of like he's been using that ability to kind of gain traction in his life to kind of like, for example, cheat on a test. You know, that stuff like that. That that Naruto shit, basically. Yeah, or like, oh, someone's going to come and beat me up. Well, there's a gang of them, so I'm just going to possess one of them. Oh, look, I fell on the ground like I'm epileptic. But all of a sudden, some uh, my dude friend punches like the big boss. And then I wake up again and I run away. That kind of thing. So. I see what you mean by them not being super cool. But at the same time, they're, it, this sounds like a very, very useful, if not conniving ability. And I assume that that's kind of how you, the the, the main character, kind of uses that ability, right? He uses it more in, in mal- more malicious ways. Not necessarily evil, but definitely like... Yo, just like a could, prankster, there, there could or be like, some real scummy shit that he does, like or trying to get an advantage where he shouldn't have. So he has used it very liberally in order to achieve the honor class, to get to the high school of his dreams, and to date the high school popular girl, only for it to fall completely flat because he gets called out by Nao, who is a student council president from another of course, school. Of course, it's a student council. And her academy that she's a president of essentially houses all these kids that have these quirks because, unfortunately, two things happen in this world. Your quirk or your ability generally only lasts until around puberty. And then when you, bec- when you go past the period of puberty, it disappears. So all of a sudden, uh, a skill or a talent that you have relied on that is unique to you all of a sudden is gone. And if you've relied on it all your life, you kind of have nothing that you can use in your adult life. That's kind of their theory. The other darker aspect, which is very real in this world, is then scientists end Uh up kidnapping you and family members would sell you off to do experiments and they kind of go into that in a very hardcore way. So in, in this particular world, like, you know, if you do it as a comparison to My Academia, where it's like, you know, you, most people are, are born with a quirk. It's gen, generally accepted um, as, as a norm in society, and therefore they use it for good. But this is more kind of like, not not necessarily vigilantes, but more like, this is some real underground shit. Yeah. And we need to figure out like w- how it comes about, what it's for, and also how to exploit it. Yeah. And the general public are not aware that a lot, that like a good amount of people have these kinds of abilities. And there's like men in black kind of like, so, like experimenting. Man, it really goes from like some real happy go lucky, like can't believe my luck kind of kid just stumbling upon this power and just cheating his way to the top to becoming some real. Like, top secret government conspiracy yeah. shit. So this academy, Hoshinomi Academy, uh, essentially, um, obviously, with the student council president being now, what she does is she and her student council, which you eventually joins, then goes trying to find these people with these quirks to kind of either house them or kind of counsels them. This, this sounds like some real X-Men shit, actually. <laughs> it is actually quite X-Men-like. Because it's kind of weird all over the place. And the humor is also very, very uh, comical. Which I thought... And the tone is one of the things that I actually do not like about this show. Oh, interesting. Because... Do you not like, do you not like, like, like that kind of juxtaposition of like comedy using to sort of like pave over certain like more sinister cracks... Oh, no, no, no. They do show that. They don't hide that yeah, whatsoever. Okay. But what I meant is more like um, the structure and the pace of the shows minus maybe the first episode to kind of get you uh, 
ingrained into the lore of the world, then becomes a lot of monster of the week. Except at a certain point that is, I'm not going to say what happens or I'm not going to spoil anything beyond what Which I'm Which episode, Jason? I'm not going to say. <laughs> but there's a certain point where something happens and everything literally shifts in tone. Like almost like a complete 180. And it is really odd. And whether or not you think that that was a good choice, like that kind of twist, is up to you. I think I was a bit more of like, well, this was kind of weird. But I kind of was like, all right, let's see where this goes. But I think other people on the internet or whatever are less kind to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that it's a 7.75, it suggests that it's it seems to be a bit more on the positive side. But I think like if we sort of just deconstruct it, right, the, the, the plot, the concept – Pretty solid, right? I mean, yeah. yes, it's like familiar sort of surroundings with the whole X Men, My Hero Academia comparison. But hey, if it's good, it's good. It seems that though, like the screenwriting and maybe the delivery of that plot going forward in terms of its style, that that's like the more sort of like on the fence, and depends on which side of the fence you are on for this. Well, speaking of style, let's talk about the look and the animation of Charlotte, which is fucking fantastic it's pa works they did it good is work. yeah extremely gorgeous very fluid like it is a a to a plus material not like ufo table style of of dedication but th- it is rock solid it is always just really pretty all the colors are vibrant everything is great even the expressions there's a meme about like them on a in a supermarket arc that is really funny because they talk about getting melon bread and then it became a, like a meme. Oh, man, I haven't had melon pond in, in a hot minute. It's probably been a decade since I've had melon pond, actually. But uh, I do think that if you were to watch it week by week when it was airing, when that twist happens, you would have lost your mind in being like, what the fuck just happened? And then you kind of maybe would have been in that fervor in that kind of conversation. And I think you're point of view would have changed quite a bit as opposed to like watching it like all maybe, available maybe, now maybe binging it and like exactly. you, you steadily build it up and then all of a sudden the 180 happens right out of nowhere and you're like okay cool uh-huh. i'll just i'll just load the next one and just keep going right so um i cannot really talk about the plots obviously past what i've already said but it, i think it's a very good time i would probably give it a, like a high eight it's an 8.5 but not a nine so it has to be an eight okay i was i was wondering where you were you were maybe because of like the the, the tonal shift like certain the delivery of like comedy like you might have had it more like a 7.5 but the here as, as an 8.5 and then adjusting it down to an eight that that does sound more promising yeah because the comedic beats work in my opinion and the tonal shift is kind of one of those things where there is always, as I, as you might hear from my premise, my, uh, you know, uh, when I sort of tell you the story, there is like this hidden, like dark side, and like, like, like at the back of your mind, that's always in the anime. And then when it kind of comes to the forefront, that's when you go like, oh shit. So whether you see that as a good or bad thing is up to you, and whether you see the how it plays out is also up to you. But you're, you're, you're would you say you're more confident in like a, a, a newcomer to Charlotte liking the show? I think it's a very strong show. I, I think undoubtedly there is a lot of these connections, as I said, with My Her Academia and all of these X-Men. Very People might say it's overdone, but I think this might be an overdone premise, but it's a premise in this anime that is done well. It's a, a, a good delivery. A very good delivery. I'm I'm very happy with Charlotte. I should have watched it sooner, but that's why we have the cleanup, right? Yep. Um, did you manage to finish it, or like how how far into it are you now? I I, you, you I shouldn't say I, no no say I can't it's... say the number because if I say the episode number, then you'll know when to expect those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So uh, what I will say though, they only have one season, and I think an OVA or some specials. 
So unfortunately, similarly with a lot of other shows, there's no second season, third season, so on and so forth. But it's, it's especially hard being an original too, right? Like it's yeah. not as likely, especially if you don't have more source material to go by. And it's it's hard to market something to make money off of it if there is no actual like tangible resource to sell from like making an adaptation of it. Uh, this, this is just yeah. purely original. Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, popularity 65 on my anime list I think is quite crazy but it is in many ways worthy of that hype just not 65 out of the whole pantheon would of you have a top 100 though top 200 maybe if it was just anime originals then yes okay but in terms of because of how vast the anime landscape is maybe something that's like top two maybe top 300 it's also be... very crowd pleasing to okay. be fair so it makes sense that it's like that highly received then in terms of like popularity if you say you gave Charlotte a nine, I would be like, yeah, okay. that's Yeah, it was, Charlotte was pretty good. And then there might be like a 1% that gives it a 10, which you'd be yeah. like, okay, if you sure. give the reasons, sure. If you gave it a seven, I'll be like, yeah, I can I can also see that too. Okay. So it just, it just depends on who you are, basically. But I think it's very solid, end of the day. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go 180 because I'm starting from the least interesting to the, ooh, this is, this is hella interesting for me. Uh, this is probably going to be super controversial, so depending on who you are, I may trigger you. On the other hand, if you also vibe with my thoughts, then yay, you're welcome to the club. Uh, I'm unfortunately talking about Fooly Cooly, F-C-L, uh, F-L-C-L. Uh, so, Yo, we start off the gate with the banger shit, dude. I know, th- but, but, but hear me out. It's probably going to be a long one, too. So just some background information. Like Charlotte, this is also an anime original, but as uh, like an OVA, only six episodes. Uh, original property rights belonged to Studio Gainax. Now that's a name. From oh, because right? you got triggered, right? Yeah, I uh, it, it mean, like they definitely weren't around long enough to you know see the light of day with Trigger. Um, but um, yeah, uh, the soul, the, the 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 property rights were then sold over to Production IG. So when you look at uh, my anime list in terms of its uh, uh, anime entry, both. IG as well as Gynex are listed as uh, the production studios for the series. Um, I got to go over all the fucking uh, awards too because damn man, like third best uh, for uh, best animation film at the Fantasia Festival in 2003. Got an, in 2007, it got a nomination for best cast as well as winning the best comedy series and best short series at the American Anime Awards show. So, Quite a lot of accolades. Very well received, at least from like the critics' choice. Um, it, it seems that like in terms of like the the, the readers' choice, which are you know the anime viewers, the, the stats also pretty much back it up too. Two hundred eighteen for popularity with over seven hundred seventy thousand members and a raw mouse score of eight point zero three, which puts it at five hundred forty five for its overall ranking. Also, uh. As of recording, they have announced a while ago two new FLCL properties because yep. there is a lot of FLCL now either in production or already released. Yeah, so they had uh, FLCL uh, Progressive, which is an anime movie from 2018, uh, FLCL Alternative, which is a 2018 anime movie, but I think they also then released it as like a six-episode format as well. Like Mugen Train style. Yeah, and then the, the, the new sequels that Jason was referring to are FLCL Grunge and FLCL Shoegaze. Um, Licensed so, yeah. by Adult Swim and Toonami. Damn. that That's another... Damn, like Adult Swim, sure, but Toonami, oof. If you were, I mean, like, thank God for Cowboy Bebop because that's basically what put Toonami on the on the fucking charts. Well, I'm just gonna jump the gun and say, do not try to explain the storyline of FLCL, please. Like a lot of Gynex slash Trigger properties, it's kind of insane to even go into a plot synopsis because it's very much. Nothing happens until something happens. And, and then something, everything yeah. happens. Yeah. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, great movie, by the way. But um, in, in particular with, with, with Fully Cooley, I think it, it, just, it just sounds better to me calling it Fully Cooley and FLCL. Um, now, for the longest time, especially when like getting into anime and then getting more into it like in the last 10 years, 
and also balancing that out with looking at and watching Annie Tubers on YouTube talking about, you know, various anime series, manga series. It seems that the name Fooly Cooly pops up every now and then as that that classic, that that the the the, the, the heights of wackiness from the two thousands anime generation. For me, in my experience with interacting with a lot of weebs, when they are, you know, let's say they don't follow the seasonals or the day-to-day stuff, they would say, for the critically acclaimed, they would say Spirited Away. For the wacky, it would always, almost undoubtedly be FLCL. Yeah. And I can see why. Um, Just from the get-go, it looks cool. It, 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 in, in terms of like its its style, I don't know why you're laughing. I mean, talking about Gainax here, um, it looks like a very well put together, very well animated, action based comedy series, and you wouldn't have expected any for anything different from from Studio Gainax. The issue that I do have, though, is the fact that when I was talking about how nothing happens and something happens and then everything happens, this was one where the something and the everything were just things I just did not really care about. It was hard to like resonate with a lot of things in this series because of how, unfortunately, wacky it is. And wacky usually is something where it's like, oh, it's it's quirky, it's weird, it's, it's zany, strange, you right? Know? You know, it's it's tubular, man. It's like it's just like it's just shocker, dude. Yeah, and it, it it came from that era, right? Yes, it the did. late nineties, early two thousands. Like, let's grind. Let's you go on our skateboards and grind some rails, type shit. I mean, this is around the time with like the bebops, the Ghost in the Shell shit. If we're going live action, Matrix only released like a year after that, or the year before that. It was nineteen eighty nine or two thousand one. The first Matrix, around that time. Around right? that time, yeah, and. I really think that we have not really emphasized uh, how culturally significant, at least from an underground perspective, if you could even, if that makes any sense. It's just very well known. It's almost beloved, almost universally, or at least. It's it's like basically like you put it up on Rotten Tomatoes, it would be very, very, very popular, right? More tomatoes, less splatter. But for me, when it came to watching it, it it felt like a show that was very artsy, but without the substance to carry it. And I mean Ooh. that in a way that I just felt that with all the action that was going on and all the different like sort of like calamitous chaos that was like happening like from scene to scene to scene, it very much kind of played out like a a, a more action focused, less wordy version of like a monogatari because when we watch any of the monogatari like seasons or movies or half episodes or whatnot it's very much like five seconds you get a bunch of words thrown at you and then there's a still of like a train station and then there's going to be like a, like a, you know a zoom up to the sky and then there's a panty shot in front of your face and then all of a sudden you see the main character look at female character look back at main character more words on the screen blah 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 blah, blah. it's insanely fast paced but you when you watch it it does take a couple of times for you to rewind, reconsume it, and then you'd be like, "Ah, oh, yes, I totally get it now." Even if it's not like your mother tongue is, like, you know, we talked about the whole translation issue of Monogatari and all the Nishio stuff. But when you watch it, as as chaotic as Monogatari is, you appreciate it because it all makes sense at the end. It all is based off of something that was very much formulated to be complex but also easy easy for you to understand if you give yourself enough viewings. So would you say FLCL is just crazy for crazy's sake? It's unfortunately how I feel about it. And to to be fair, look, it's a it's an 8.04, right? It's it's literally like the 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 flattest you can go without being an 8 uh in terms of having people enjoy the series. Like if you go by what it says on my anime list, it is deemed very good. And also with over seven hundred thousand people on the members list, putting it, you know, at a pretty pretty high popularity, you could see that this is obviously something that like it's it's the go to, like you said, when people talk about that art house, that sort of more avant garde, the 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 road less. I was waiting for you to say avant garde because yeah. I really do think that avant garde describes FLCL very accurately. And unfortunately, it's just not 
like that cup of tea for me. Like when when we talk about this kind of stuff, like we when we talk about shows at like that or or films that get featured at like you know a French film festival or Sundance or whatnot, it's not always going to be like super interesting. But there's enough elements that people can critically sort of praise it. Right, there's a different a lot of like movies and shows, whether it be live action or animated, um, that are very slow, very very like dry. But in terms of like its art styling, camera angles, pacing, delivery of script and whatnot, that could be like more than enough for you to give it a positive review. For me, however, it felt like the script was kind of just written on like a bar napkin and then just given to somebody who may or may not have been the best choice as a voice actor. I know I'm sounding incredibly harsh, but that's just how it was for me. It was, I, I only got like up to like two episodes. And at that point, it just felt like it's not sinking into my head. I'm not enjoying it the way I really think I should. And it just sank. It was like, maybe this is actually something I don't enjoy. Do you actually know how I feel about FLCL? I, I think, I mean, like, surface level, I know you're not a fan of it, but, you know, break it down for me. So I do like Gainax slash Studio Trigger to bits. I think they are one of my favorite studios, if not the my favorite st- animation studio of all time. I don't like FLCL. I also, though, however, however, and this is a big however, believe it or not, is I hold... FLCL in very high regard but not for the anime itself but what it has done in terms of like its impact on anime correct so everything from because originally FLCL was an OVA so it kind of was like this underground kind of you got to know to know which is very yeah. FLCL you got to know where to get the VHS you got to know what times is going to be the playing the DVD and stuff like that like it's like that grungy like Hey, do you guys know FLCL? Like that's like your, it's is like, like yo, vouch. Yo, yo, hey, hey, bro, you, know, you want to check out some cool shit and you pull out your trench coat and then there's like a copy of FLCL right there. That yep. that's kind of how it feels when you're going into watching FLCL. And I thought at that time I was really into Jet Set Radio. And FLCL... Oh, actually, now you mentioned it. Yeah, the color palette's like very, very similar yeah, to Jet Set Radio. Yeah, and I really like Jet Set Radio and the music and everything about it. But for FLCL, it was one of those things where I actually did not watch it at that time. I only watched FLCL way, way later. Like, maybe like six, seven years after it premiered. So what does that mean? That means that, unfortunately... I do not have that either nostalgic factor or I have only watched the stuff that was inspired by FLCL. Just like how Madoka Magica, I feel, is kind of okay. Although I do like Madoka Magica more than I like FLCL. But I like a lot of the stuff that FLCL inspired. A lot of the Madoka Magicas that inspired. Just like how I don't necessarily have a huge soft spot for Star Wars. I don't hate it, uh, I, but I don't love it to bits. But I will always, always appreciate like things like Star Wars and Star Trek that brings about space travel, that brought us like Mass Effect and all of these other space Inter- galactic... intergalactic pop, uh, politics and war. Yeah, and stuff just like, like how that. Lord of the Rings did that for high fantasy and how Harry Potter did that for like modern wizardry. I don't necessarily... I have like varying degrees of like love hate or indifference to any all of these properties but from a historical perspective just like flcl and madoka magica it is pivotal it is in the history books but i don't really care for it but i can't tell if it's because of the hype behind it so then when i saw it people are like i'm like is that it or maybe the genre that inspired it by it has evolved and I like those shows, so then it's kind of like this, like, sh- I should like it, but I don't, and everyone keeps talking about it. Is there something wrong with me? You know, like that kind of thing. It's like you want to pay homage to the predecessor, but at the same time, it's hard to when you don't fully appreciate what it does for you, right? It's 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 in the same way where it's like there's a lot of shonen series like that came out in like the early 2000s, mid-2010s, and like up until now where like I really fucking like 
But if I was to go back and watch Yu Yu Hakusho, it'd be yeah, a yeah. hard watch. Yeah, I, I, I think that's exactly it. Like, I think JJK, even Naruto, is heavily, like, in existence because of manga and animes like Yu Yu Hakusho. There's just no doubt in my mind. But it's hard. I, mean, I tried watching Yu Yu Hakusho again. It was just like, man, like it's so hard to get into. And it's because of the fact that like you're so used to the contemporary interpretations and influences that derived from those predecessors that you just grow accustomed to stuff that you watch now. And it kind of just warps your appreciation of the things that came before. Yeah. Not to say that we disregard them. Not to say that we like absolutely hate those things. It's just the fact that if something works now, I'm going to enjoy the stuff that works now. Right. And that's why for all of those properties I mentioned earlier, like FLCL, Madoka Magica, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, always historically significant in their like realm, in their genre. But different degrees of like, dislike, love, and hate. And with FLCL... I am very lukewarm, if not just whatever about it. Look, animation, fantastic. Character design, superb. Oh, music, it, also incredible. Do you like bass, guys? Yeah. Like bass it's, guitar? It's a vibe. Unfortunately, other things kind of detract the appreciation I have for Fully Cooly, FLCL. Uh, and therefore, I, it's, it's not for me. Whether I can recommend it to someone else... Uh, look, the, the, the stats that's don't lie. Le- that's a right? legit question. The stats don't lie because it's always like it might not be for me, but it might be for you. That kind of like recommendation, right? In the same way where it's like when you have stuff that is like a nine or a ten and like nines, you can universally like recommend to people. But tens tend to have a bit more personal attachment to it. And therefore, it's like what's a 10 for me might not be a 10 for you in the same way where like whatever score I would have given fully coolly may not be the same score that you would have given fully coolly. Um, and yeah, it, it just sounds like a fucking like bullshit answer on my side of whether or not I would recommend fully coolly to somebody. Yeah. You really have to see for yourself if this is something that works, it doesn't really work for me and therefore I can't give it a conclusive score, but there could be someone out there that's willing to take in a rather like loose plot with rather kind of like apathetic voice acting, in my opinion, uh, but balanced out with amazing visuals, a great color scheme, and just high octane action, like minute by minute by minute. And if that's something that you can very much enjoy go for it. If you're trying to find something that has a little bit more of a cohesive plot and actual character direction, there's probably other shows you can check out. But this is not to detract it's the legacy that Fully Cooly has within anime and manga. So I give them props for that, but in terms of me actually watching the series, it's 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 not it's a no for me. So it's a drop it's a drop. I only. I mean, I'm not watching anything beyond two episodes. It, it, and the sh- and, and the sad thing is that like it's only six episodes. It really isn't that hard to watch. Twenty five minutes each, an hour and a half. You're done. I can get past the first half hour. Right. A- again, though, that's just based on my likes and like what I try and go for in anime and manga. Don't let that deter you from checking out Fully Cooly because it's readily available. You can watch it if you want, and your experience will vary. Right. Your mileage may vary. That, I'm just. I'm gonna say. Yeah, I, I don't think not liking something is always a bad thing. I just think when you, I think the fact that you feel so defensive about it is indication of just how how conflicted I am. Exactly this, right. This, this kind of review, right? Exactly. So that's why I I know where you're coming from, especially because I went through similar thought processes. Because I, I, I very much am in the same ballpark as you in terms of how I feel about FLCL. So, yeah. Yeah. So that that's my that, – that, those are my thoughts on Fully Cooley. And in, in, in a similar way, also how Jason feels about Fully Cooley. Um, check it out if you want. Don't, don't, don't take my word for it. Um, but if you also, like, like me, don't really vibe with it, let's also talk about that on Twitter or whatnot or even on our Discord channel. Um, on to your second – uh, series that you've been watching. Um, I have a feeling, though, that this one you probably have a 
similar kind of more apathetic, not as positive uh, perspective on Spoiler this. Spoiler alert. I mean, I, 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 I just saw what was up next. I was like, oof. I, I am dying to hear what you have to say about this series. The next series on my cleanup list is Nobunaga Concerto. Ah, let there be light, Will. Thank you. Uh, Nobunaga Concerto is based on the ongoing manga of the same name by Ayumi Ishii, who did the story and the art. The manga won the 57th Shogakukan Manga Award for Best Shonen Manga in 2011. And the anime was nominated for the Banff uh, World Media Festival's Rookie Award in the animation category in That's 2015. That's amazing. Do you know where Banff is? It's no. over in Canada. Oh, on shit. The, on, the, on the West Coast. Uh, not the West Coast. It's like like the Rockies, essentially, of, of, of Canada. Oh, that's cool. Big, big skiing uh, resort up there. Oh, so it's like Colorado? I think possibly higher. I don't know. Just as much pot, though. It premiered in summer 2014, produced by Fuji TV. Which is a very interesting one, and I think that might explain a certain perspective of you know your experience watching this series the anime uh mal score 7.55 rank 1568 popularity 2657 56000 members yep. and the manga mal score 7.48 2930 ranked and popularity 68 Seven five. I, I would understand if the manga is a little bit lower than the anime, simply because with the word concerto in the title, I would imagine that music would play an element in this series. So therefore, having an audiovisual element to it would probably be the reason why the anime is rated slightly higher. But it's only very slightly, zero point zero seven, um, in terms of its score between the ma- the manga and the the anime. So. I don't know how much you watched of it, but I think like quite early on when you started cracking open the series, that, uh, that's when the floodgates kind of came in uh, in terms of your thoughts on Nobunaga Concerto. All right. Here's the premise, Will. You are a high school student in modern Japan. You are in, of all classes, Japanese history. Okay? No way. Japanese history in a Japanese historical setting? The very first line of the very first episode is the teacher saying, by the way, guys, the, all this stuff that we discussed today is common sense. You all need to know this if you want to know anything about Japanese history. Okay. Then class is over. You decided to then, hey, I am just going to chill and walk home. Okay. Then you see uh, uh, you know, a fence. And you're like, hey, I'm kind of edgy. I'm kind of cool. I am going to climb that fence and try to walk on it, you know, like on the top. And then you trip and you fall. Okay. Then you wake up. Why does everything look different? This is not modern Japan. Why are these samurais running around? Why are they on horseback? What is going on? Wait. This person is coming towards me saying, my lord, my lord, my lord. And then a guy like Walt Spine says, oh, um, so I'm Nobunaga. And uh, you look exactly like me, but I need to piece the fuck out. So um, can you just stand in for me? Okay, cool. Bye. Thus starts the story of Nobunaga Concerta. Concerto. And anything else you say afterwards would be spoiler as heck. But I feel like you don't really need to say much more about the the rest of the story because... I mean, that's literally the first 10 minutes. So I, I want to hear what you liked about the show, what you didn't like about the show, and based on whichever you know one you overload on, what could have been done better, what worked already and doesn't need to be changed. Because you had a, a, a lot to say about... Nobunaga Concerto, but not so much in terms of like plot, but rather the presentation of the series. So this is what I like about Nobunaga Concerto, okay? Okay, now, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what I don't like about the anime. Man, I thought there'd be at least one thing you liked about the series. 
But I yeah, when I yeah. when I turned it off. Oh, God damn, it was that hard for you to watch. Oof. So first of all, when you have that kind of pedigree behind it with the awards, right? Obviously, you we try our best, or anyone would try their best to not be super swayed, but it's very hard to. I mean, Shogakukan Manga Award, and then the anime also won an award. So it's one thing if the source wins an award, but the anime also wins an award. So then there's this like. There is this kind of, you know, There's impression a, on me, you know? A, a double gravitas. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, oh, both the manga and the anime is dope to a, to, to a certain group of audience. Great. I watched the first, like, five minutes, and I was like, something's not right. And I thought that, like, the stream that I was looking at was just, like, stilted or something. Like, it's not streaming. I checked my internet connection. I literally did all these things, by the way. No word of a lie. I restarted my computer, and it, the same thing persisted. The anime is so – the animation is so stilted. Do you think it's just because it's Fuji TV? So here goes a little bit of conspiracy theory and my theory towards that conspiracy theory. I think the reason why it's done by Fuji TV – is because the whole point of this anime is mainly based in being educational. That's what actually was trying to go for as well. Like being that Fuji TV is like a large broadcaster, one of the main ones in Japan where they cover everything from news to sports, media, entertainment, and you know, anime and manga, right? So does it at least provide like a good level of educational value because again it's like nobunaga is a big name but at the same time it's not Isn't like it oba an, yeah, nobunaga yeah. right oda oda nobunaga. oda, oda yeah. sorry oba, but, but even then it's like it's 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 specifically japanese history which mm-hmm. to be fair a lot of curriculums at least you know when we were growing up didn't really cover so whilst we know the name we don't really know much about who oda nobunaga is and do you feel that this is a series that does that well or was that something that like even through watching it it this it just didn't stick the anime is not educational except for the fact that it tells you how much you don't know let me tell you that because i thought going in that when they kind of have a narrator you know kind of describing oh this guy gets transported and now he is nobunaga relives everything oh you know whatever right i thought oh okay so this is kind of like a history lesson in a form of education just like how you know we talk about like uh in slice of life genre like cute girls doing cute things they kind of give you a little bit of an introduction towards that subject the things that those cute girls do right here is actually the polar opposite they introduce all these characters give them like a one sentence summary and expects you to know literally everything that's about to happen or everything that happened before that point. So because very much in the way where it's like, it, it's a cliff note, but like if you are Japanese or you have studied Japanese history, that's all you really need. But for somebody who doesn't really know much about it at all, it, it, it provides nothing for you. It provides nothing. And you're like, there's something missing that I need to know because clearly there is something there. And I think it's one of those things where, almost it is expected that the audience would know so if they don't then you're just kind of like okay it doesn't make sense then comes the weird aesthetic yeah, choices yeah. and i do not mean just the animation because yeah. that's terrible say, say for example that you actually do know about japanese history or you are japanese and you're you know well versed in the the history that is oda nobunaga right is there anything else in the series that like offers any value no because even if you do it's just a kind of rom-com not rom-com but it's kind of just a comedy zany like oh this guy that is not nobu trying to be nobu or pretending acting a fool isn't that funny and i'm like you're just like every other isekai the wacky escapades of oda nobunaga yeah and this his doppelganger except there is no there is no, like, oh, he kind of stumbles into getting everything right all the time. He kind of does this correctly, or he has this superpower kind of thing. It is just a dude. 
I mean, okay, there's more to that. I'm not going to say what it is. But most of the time, almost all of the time, it's just a high school dude in a position that is supposed to be one of the most important positions in feudal Japan at that time. And it is so just not good. So animation, not good. The premise is hard because of the fact that, like, you're just not, like, versed in Japanese history. And any of you were, and then how, comes, much more, how much more educational value can it provide, right? And then comes the style. So, okay, you might think, like, okay, so the animation is stilted, okay? But it's drawn kind of okay, right? I'm actually not talking about that when I mean by style. Every once in a while, they will do, like, these weird literal, like, Final Cut Pro transitions where it's like graphics design, like a line and then all these grids, and it just looks very like graphics design-esque, and then it disappears. It's in there for the OP. If you watch the opening, you will know what I mean because it looks super like sleek and futuristic, and then it never shows up ever again. It's like an aesthetic choice purely as like a... A style over substance, basically. I have no idea what this show is trying to say or do. Now, with the name... Nobunaga Concerto, focusing on the concerto part, is there any music in this? I'm sorry, what? Right. So this is more like concerto in the sense that it's a solo artist being supported by an ensemble, which is what a concerto is. A concerto is like a a musical concert of a solo artist that's supported by an orchestra. I'm taking it that they use the word concerto in the way that it is the solo artist, which is... Oda Nobunaga being supported by an ensemble of people who happen to be in the series. I mean, you get like Nana Mizuki, who is a very well-known voice actress and singer. You get, uh, I think, Yuki Aoi, who is also like voice actress, say you also slash music artist. So it is not necessarily unfounded. Uh, and it's fine. Honestly, it's fine. Uh, I think a lot of people would highlight the concerto part and the, and the the audio part. To me, though, if that's the case, then I will just put on Spotify and listen to it. I'm not going to watch it. Because watching it was just not a good experience. So who is this for, then? Because, I, because look, there's it, it, 7.55, right, for the anime? Yeah. Yeah, and whilst it's not hugely popular, right, only just over 50k people on my anime list, I think in the 2000s for the, the, the ranking uh, for popularity, it, it sounds niche as fuck. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things where if you were to, just like how FLCL is kind of of its time, Nobunaga Concerto, if you were to watch it at that time, plus have a lot of knowledge of Japanese history or have Wikipedia open next to you while you watch it, then I would say then you will have a level of appreciation that is very different than how I interpreted and appreciated it. So you and I have watched a lot of series that came out in like the late 2000s, early 2000s, and to this day you would say that the animation and art holds up pretty well. This came out in 2014, so nine years ago, like, is it just, you know, due to time that it just doesn't look well, it doesn't look good? Or do you think it's just because of the fact that maybe Fuji TV is not necessarily a studio that's renowned for doing good quality animation? Yes. But, okay, so of my four cleanup picks, I'm just going to say the year, okay? So, or, or I guess the season as yeah, well. Yeah, Charlotte was fairly recent. So it was summer 2015 okay, for so Charlotte. Eight years. High School DxD is winter 2012. Uh, Nobunaga is summer 2014. And Drifters is fall 2016. So all like within like a five-year span in the mid-2010s. And they're all next to each other. Yeah. Right? If you were to tell me that Nobunaga was made in two, th- wait, wait, yeah, 2014. 2014. If it was made in 2004, then I'll believe you. Right. So it's it, it just does not look aesthetically pleasing. Plot is just and, something that you can't get into because what what is the plot really? And it has this weird where the foreground or the characters are drawn, but then the background is 3D. And then furthermore... It is very stilted. I cannot emphasize that enough, where it's almost like they didn't have enough frames per second. Do you think maybe it won those awards because it's 
aesthetically quirky? I think I actually don't know. I, the only thing that I can find out from like the forums and stuff is that apparently the manga is like phenomenal, right? Which makes sense because it did win in a manga like award, right? Yeah, it was rated lower than the anime around, yeah, but it's a roughly the same, the, yeah. But like, still, if right? you aggregate it, it comes down to seven point five across both. I just don't know what this show is, in especially in the modern era where. If you want something where it's like isekai time travel esque, there's tons of better shows out there. If you want something that's actually rooted in very educational historical context, there's more other shows or mangas out there. Or just read a textbook, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it it is disappointing to hear that, but you know, I haven't watched it, so I can't really give my two cents because I usually just went off of the fact that it seems like a niche hit. Um, it's for people that really seem to care about no, uh, no, Nobunaga. I really think if you watch the first episode or even half of the first episode, you will understand a lot of what I am trying to say. Yeah, I watched you... like a two minute clip of like the animation and like I'm Was not. It, were they galloping in a forest? No, but they were. But the the mouths were kind of like were like flapjacks. They just like open, close, open, close. And that's it. There's no yep. real like facial animations. It's. Better than old school South Park, I will say that much. Wow, that is rough. Because South Park doesn't look all that great, especially when it first came out. <laughs> Yeesh. Um, okay, obviously it's not that bad, but what but I mean, but, it, but it's like, but it, it it just didn't vibe with you, right? You just it, hella didn't you, vibe. You couldn't really find much enjoyment out of watching it. And I try to come at it from a perspective where, oh, there needs to be a saving grace. There needs to be uh, uh something that I am not really grasping that seems to have a lot of this hype from this very minority like niche but very vocal minority right and i i i couldn't grasp at anything all right okay well i would have given this a six alt noah dot zero or i'm just gonna call it alt noah zero uh anime original which premiered in summer 2014 produced as a co-production between a1 pictures and troika pretty clear which ones did what parts of the animation for the series uh currently on my anime list as a raw score of 7.4 ranked 2092 uh quite popular actually um 401 with just under half a million members on my anime list, technically has a season two, right? It does have a season two, so I don't know, like this, but the, uh, the score that's yeah, the score that's the been given uh, is specifically for season one. Uh, we're not right. going to go into season two just because it's not stipulated. We have to watch everything that's available, um, but um, yeah. Just a sort of uh, quick synopsis. It's like every other mecha series there is. Oh, snap. Okay. Yeah. Fucking like riveting, right? Wait, hold um, on, hold on. I actually do not know the plot. So mechs are involved. Okay, okay. I, I'm not being facetious. There's a galactic sort of war slash dispute between Hold on, hold on. Hold, sorry, sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to guess the home planet, okay? I'm not looking. It has to be Mars. Mars is involved. Please don't tell me Earth is involved. There's Earth, and there's the moon. Yo, the lunar Lunarians, the lu, 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 Lunarians. They discover a portal on the moon that can transport that once allowed uh, the transport of the human race to the to Mars, basically. Uh, so, oh, it's a mass relay. Yeah, it's essentially unearthing like ancient technologies that are able to put machines into hyperdrive and really, really further like mechanical advancements of these mobile suits that they use uh, in order to essentially, you know, assimilate people or to, you know, take over new worlds and whatnot. So wage Mass galactic Effect warfare. install in stores now? This is this is my thing. Okay. Right? Especially when it comes to the mecha genre. Are there any mecha genre like, mecha series that's not ingrained in intergalactic warfare or politics? I don't know the, the 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 story behind Darling in the Franks, but I assume there is going to be some sort of intergalactic warfare element in Darling in the Franks. I I okay, so I mean, I th- would you consider like Sentai, like Power Rangers, Mechs? No, 
Okay. I'm specifically talking about them big ass robots. I, if it's like, like like Power Rangers, I get, but I think that's in itself like its own thing, right? No, I'm not trying to yeah. like poke holes. I, I'm but like even then, that one that one also does have like intergalactic warfare. Too. Yeah, I, I'm like legitimately trying to think. Um, I mean, I'm obviously I'm sure there is one that we have not thought about that we should have, right? But I always feel that when mechs are involved, it always means futuristic. And if you don't do anything about space, it's almost like you're losing out on one of the main reasons why you do choose mechs. Yeah. Right? Especially, like, any, like, major, like, series or movie trilogies that are focused on like, intergalactic exploration, like Star Wars, or, like Star Trek, there's always going to be politics and warfare like, involved so yeah, especially on a grand scale, exactly, right? right? It makes sense when you have like massive fleets of spaceships and robots. Of course, you're gonna have some full scale battle between two forces, and in this case, it's between Vers or whatever it's called. And it, I think the 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 home planet is called Vers. I really think it means Earth, um, and and Mars. And um, is it so Mars is just called Mars. Mars is just called Mars, bro, because it's so fucking out there, bro, dude. <laughs> and so it's um. This this sounds like it's me like ragging on it, and in a slightly like condescending way, it kind of is. Because look, like as much as it is an anime original, it's not groundbreaking. It's very much a story that if you watched any mecha series, really, you're not really getting a whole different flavor from watching Alt Noah Zero. So let me ask you one thing first, Will. How did A One Pictures do? Now Troya, okay, that's a different thing, but. What about A1 Pictures? So that was where I was going to go for in terms of like how clear it is in terms of who like designed and animated what. Because so the 3D is Troika. There you go. Right? Bingo. But A1 Pictures be doing A1 Pictures stuff, man. It does look really, really pretty. It looks nice. The 3D, surprisingly, not that bad. It's not super fluid, but it's also not like it just sticks out like a sore thumb. I think it meshes in well with the the animation quality, at least on the 2D level, of what I, I assume uh, was done by A1 Pictures. So in terms of like the aesthetics, it looks good. The voice acting, great. I, I, I have no problems with the voice actors and actresses they chose and how they delivered their lines. The thing I do have a bit of an issue, though, is just that the, the plot is generic as heck. And it's 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 not like a super fun anime to watch because it's Is it very serious and like it doomsday tries to be. gloom? It tries to be. And the problem with that is because the fact that the main ensemble cast is just like mid high schoolers. Like they're just they're just, they're just the middle school to high school. They're not they're not mid. Like it's just like you're you're young kids, and the way they go about things are like very naive and blasé and stuff. It's like and I get that right. Like you kind of want to have this kid who's never experienced war before all of a sudden be thrown into war and see them crack. I well, get that. They're not ironclad, iron blooded orphans, and nor are they from Mercury and, either. And, and, right. And that's unfortunately how I have to actually compare that to those two even though i haven't watched rich from mercury but i just wanted to maybe get your thoughts on that later on right so in terms of like the whole conflict between two galactic forces two different planets of people i it just seemed like iron blooded orphans would be much better i'm sorry and I'm so sorry, therefore it's what, like what, what? That, that, I, even though i'm not that disrespectful jason um in terms of like the 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 characters one thing i will praise is that there is a very good level, at least from initial inspection, of female representation. Right. That there is a lot of like female characters, uh, young and older, uh, that you know carry their own weight, are at the forefront of things. So the Galactic Council is not just a bunch of old dudes. No. Okay. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of rambunctious like young women who you know take up the mantle of protecting the ones they love and you know serving their their planet or their country or whatever this is uh and actually kicking some fucking ass um i don't know how that's portrayed in witch from mercury um seeing that this is like the the one and only time where there's a female lead in any of the mobile suit gundam series the first one yeah, yeah. um i think the witch from mercury is they play it very safe in terms of representation they kind of like tick the boxes in many ways. Yeah. But at the same time, they don't 
highlight it like, hey, look, we are being all inclusive, but it's very clearly there. So I guess you could say, well, you put it there on purpose. I'm okay, fine. In that case, then sure. Uh, but I'm a bit more sympathetic in that, well, if you think about it, I think um, even back then when I talked about Witch from Mercury, I think a very um, – there's a Danny Boyle film called Sunshine where it's about space. Duh. And the cast of people on this spaceship are all like of various nationalities and races. Michelle Yeoh is in there. Uh, I think – uh, C- Silly Murphy, I think. Is he? Okay. Yeah, he's in there too. Uh, I think uh, Rose Byrne is in there. So, but then they they really emphasize. I think Benedict Wong is in there too. That's actually a fucking amazing cast. Yeah, and there's like a Japanese guy that you're like, oh yeah, you're from the Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. Yeah, okay, checks out. Uh, so it's a really good representation. They highlighted that in the film behind the scenes, but in the film itself, they're just like. No shit, of course, because this is an effort for the entire planet Earth. So, of course, you would get representation from everywhere. Is that kind of thing. Right. So, I they mean, don't... You got a cast of, like... You're, you're talking about Ken Watanabe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ken no, 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 no. It's not Ken Watanabe. Because he, he was in Last Samurai. He was also in Letters of Iwo Jima. No, 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 no. Not Ken Watanabe, because Ken Watanabe was also in Inception, I think. Yeah. But, but I'm not talking about him. The other... Uh, there was another... Uh, gentleman that was also in The Last Samurai. Okay. But that's still like an outstanding cast. Yeah. So to go back to The Witch from Mercury and then to go back to Aldenor Zero, The Witch from Mercury plays it very safe but very quiet. Like it doesn't emphasize it besides, yeah. I guess, the possible like girl love stuff. Yeah. Because a lot of times, especially when it comes to like female empowerment through anime, it seems that a lot of female characters tend to have their like stand out power up moments when it comes out in the name of love in the name of despair and that's always like a a gripe that people have where it's like why does she need to have like a romantic interest in somebody in order to become powerful and whatnot and extremely fair comment and observation also i need to feel the need to say this will and i have penises so we can't speak we, for women we can't speak for women we won't speak for women we can only give our perspective on oh, it as okay. best no, that we no, can no, no, right okay. okay based on how you talked about you know robot penises before we have penises and we identify as male cis male yeah, cis male there you go okay okay so okay i'll know zero right so how are the f- battle scenes <sighs> they're okay Ooh. They're okay. Are there a lot of them? It's in the same way where it's like A1 Pictures does stuff pretty well. Like, for example... Just because it's A1, right? Like, but, they're but very it's good. It's, it's also like... Um, uh, shit. What was the studio that did uh, Seraph of the End? Um, oh, gosh. Hmm. Do you not know? Oh, uh, God. It starts it, with B. Yeah. Uh, or is it B or W? Is it oh, Bones wit. or Wit? It was yeah, wit. It's wit. Yeah, it's there Wit. There you go. So in the same way where it's like when you talk about Wit, like, oh, okay, for sure. Like the stuff they do for Spy Family or Spikes Family, stuff they do with like the original three seasons of Attack on Titan and Cabernary, super amazing fight sequences, action sequences. But when it comes to looking at Surf at the end, it's very like, bleh, right? That's kind of how I feel with A1 in Alt Noah Zero. It's not bad bad but it's clearly not like highlighting the strengths that they have as a studio when it comes to animating action scenes and that's why like i think that like a 7.4 is actually like a very accurate score for me it's like i would have given this if i completed it probably a seven i think that the plot itself is decent but it's not groundbreaking animation could be a bit better um overall it's a package where like if you are like a diehard mecha fan like you know in terms of the genre then this could be something that works for you i think that we've also got a mutual friend though that like who talks about season one being pretty solid pretty good but just doesn't really have a lot of good things to say about the subsequent season so take it what take, take for what you will so is it fair to say that in summation in summary uh, one of our go-to lines is, it's not a waste of your time, but it is not a good use of your time. You can definitely spend time elsewhere. Okay. Yep. That's all I'll say. Uh, while Will spends time about intergalactic politics, travel, and intergalactic battle warfare, 
Jason decides to go use his next cleanup to talk about devils, angels, and panties. So, yes, we're going to talk about porn. Roma hentai. Uh, nice. a- actually, we're talking about softcore. Very incredibly softcore. Etchy, etchy. Think world, uh, world, uh, world ends harem, basically. So, let me just give you the, the, the spiel first. So, high school DXD is what we're talking about. Based on the very, very well known, and this is my my own commentary on this, it's based on the light novel series of the same name by Ichie Ishibumi, who did the story, as well as Miyazama Zero, who did the art. Published in English by Yen Press under the Yen On imprint since uh, 2020. Premiered in winter 2012, produced by TNK. There's a shit ton of sequels, at least like four seasons in total. I think it's like. A, 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 there's a sequel and then there's like a there's reboot. Like hero, uh, no, DXD Hero, DXD New, DXD something. I think the new is the reboot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there's a lot. Okay, there's like four seasons minimum. Um, has the first season though has a mouse score of seven point three four, rank two three five eight. But get this, guys, popularity eighty has a member count of 1,349,000. The light novel source has a raw mal score of 8.19, which makes it rank 421, popularity 475. It's like the complete opposite, right? It's, it, I mean, we know manga scores don't necessarily well, have this is light novel, popular, but yeah. the light novel, but like light novel fucking like highly acclaimed. Not as much for the for the anime adaptation, but that's still but massive, okay still. It, yeah. massively popular. Still though, seven point three four. That's okay. That's 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 pretty decent. So let me tell you about high school DXD without telling you about high school DXD. It is probably one of, I guess, if you were to sort of survey a lot of weebs. I would say when anyone talks about high school DXD, at some point, he or she or however you identify yourself will say the following. And I'm paraphrasing here. High school DXD is a raunchy show, but is probably one of the best of those raunchy shows out there in existence. Like if you were to go for, like, what's your go-to etchy? This will probably be in the top three, if not the, the number one. And I firmly agree with that statement. I think, especially when I... So here's the thing. I, I think I, I admitted to Will that I have a confession to make, which was I actually watched a bit of High School DxD prior to Clean Up. But what happened was it was the kitty version, the censored version, which actually is not a bad way to watch it. However, it was in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. That's how far back we're talking, yeah. Which killed it to me. The censorship was funny, though. But the point that I was trying to make is um, I was like, uh, let me give it a, a, a retry, especially because I took it off the list when the new reboot happened. And we have a mutual friend who watched all of it. And do I need to tell you the story? Probably not. It's Bible Black Light. Hey. When you were in high school, Will, yeah, were you horny? <laughs> well, guess what? Issei is pretty horny, okay? So he was like, "Yo, I just want to like per. I just want to bang, dude. I just want. I just want to get with some. I just want to get some, you know. So, long story short, he gets on a date." With none other than probably the most popular girl in existence at that school. And he's standing out there by a fountain thinking, I'm about to get some. And then he does get some. He gets killed. Then gets revived. And so starts the high school DXD train. Because more girls get involved you find out that there are demons angels monsters in between you also find out that Issei is actually kind of powerful kind of not I don't know there are some contracts you know because soul contracts you know because it's devils you know that kind of thing okay 
it's hella good within the scope of what it is. That's what I'm trying to say. I was going to say, I was like, wow, you're giving it that much high praise. But it's then, not a nine. But, but it it's also not like, a 10. We we're fully aware of what high school DXD is. And that's how we're going to judge high school DXD. Actually, question. Is it the same thing where it's like the Hunter Hunter, Hunter X Hunter? Is it high school DXD or is it high school DD? I, I call it DXD. Yeah. But I actually don't know if like grammatically it's supposed to be DD or actually you pronounce the X. I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I always pronounce the X in Hunter X Hunter and Spy X Family. So I do so for a high school DXD. I have nothing against anyone else saying it otherwise without so, the X. So in terms of like a magical high school etchy, this, but, is some, this is some primo stuff. But for high school DXD, if you don't mention the X, it's kind of sus, bro. I'm just saying, because it's X-rated material. No, it's not X-rated. Actually, it's just soft core. It might as it's, well be because it, it's leaves, etchy. It's, it's, but, it's etchy. Yeah, but to the point where like it literally does not leave anything to the imagination. No, well, they 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 don't they they show booze, but they don't show the 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 censorship they do is actually fucking hilarious. And I, I here's the thing: that. the censorship is legit because. They know they have to censor it for the censored version, so they decide to have fun with it. And I mean, no joke, it actually enhances it. Yeah. It, this, we're not talking about worlds and harem. Oh, this censorship is hilarious because it's done so bad. I mean, if you make the argument to me that you like the censored version over the uncensored version, I'll be like, my man. In ways, actually, the censorship makes it better. It makes it better. Uh, my girl, my dude, whatever. It's listen. Do you like harm? <laughs> do you like titties? Do you like titties? Do you like magic? Do you like demons? Do you like being all powerful harem? Do you like having multiple seasons of seeing this harem? Are you horny right now? Do you also want a <laughs> decent amount of? blood and violence yeah that's true it interspersed is, it is, it is pretty it is pretty violent and here's the thing and i do mean this which is yes you don't go to high school dxd expecting shakespeare right yeah you'd be fucking like crazy to think that there's gonna be an amazing plot for this and if you go in expecting that you will not see boobs butts and tits then you are you're you, you don't have the right mindset bro honestly However, I really do admit and will advocate that as raunchy as it is, and if you consider that like within the genre of it, this is the best. Not only because of the content, like the, the cultured content, but because there actually is a story. They actually develop the characters. There's actually plot de- and character development. Yeah, sure. You can actually just look at it from a raunchy perspective. It's like, Will, sometimes you stay for the raunch, but you end up coming out with like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, you can either choose to watch it with your brain or watch it with your genitals, basically. Like, it just depends on like... And in the end, yeah. you'll you'll do both. Yeah, and you'll probably enjoy both. No, no, no sorry. Well, not brain. Your heart. Oh, yes, your heart. Your heart and your genitals. Because without your brain, you can't have your heart or your genitals. It's the core, right? So in the end, like, well, yeah, if you don't have your brain, you can't, you can't get your dick hard, or your, you know. Yeah, rigor mortis says hello, but <laughs> but 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 hear hear me out, Will. I have really not said much about high school DXD because, to be honest, it's also one of those just like FLCL, just like how we're gonna talk about Usagi Drop within this episode, oh. just like how we're gonna talk about even Charlotte to a certain degree is that. Actually, less so with Charlotte. Is that these shows, High School DxD, FLCL, and Usagi Drop, is very kind of well known as kind of like the OGs in a certain extent. And I think High School DxD is really good, especially because they remastered it. No, not not remastered it like how uh, Bow like Bow Hazard Resident Evil remaster remake with the recent ones, as in like they upscaled it made it all HD. It looks real nice. Like, real, really nice. And almost to the point where it kind of looks very uh, legit. The, yeah. It doesn't look like an anime that was in 2012. If, if you judge it for what it is, which is essentially a, like, 
a degenerate, edgy show, then you're going to enjoy this degenerate, edgy show. It's a solid eight. And I can't really say a lot for all the future seasons because I haven't gotten to there yet. But what I can say is everyone will have a waifu and it's pretty good. I thought for a minute you were going to be like, this is cringe as fuck and you weren't going to enjoy it. But I think it's also like you saw the humor in it. And let's be real. It, it, it does look fantastic. If you go in high school DXD being like, oh, my God, these guys are just being filthy, oh, immature this, this, fucks. This main character is so dumb and dense. It's like, bro, like you're 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 trying to like squeeze blood out of a rock. You're, you're not here for the right reasons. And believe it or not, though, later on, there is something there. Just not a lot because it's one of those shows, dude. Yeah. But it's really good of those shows. Probably the best, in my opinion. Damn. Without going into, like, other types. Glowing review of uh, High School DxD. I like that. Um, I'm a little bit conflicted now because I don't know which of the next two I want to go with first. So I'm just going to go How about you do with... the movie? Because I think Drop might be one that I want to talk a lot about. And actually, yes, that does make sense. So, Makia, When the Promised Flower Blooms. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. Damn, I mean, there's a lot to say about this before I even go into the series. So, uh, also known as Sayonara no Asa ni Yakusaku no Hana wa Kazado or Sayawasa, just to shorten everything up. Original anime. We have a lot of originals for this one, actually. This, this Coincidentally, this, yeah. 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 Uh, it's a di- uh, directorial debut uh, of screenwriter Marty Okada outside of Japan. It featured uh, in the international premiere of the 2018 Glasgow Film Festival. Went on to win the Golden Goblet Award for Best Animation Film at the 21st Shanghai International Film Festival. Da, 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 da. Won a lot of awards, basically. Uh, but the other thing that was uh, very, very interesting about it was that uh, domex- domestic box office hit. One of the first movies, actually, uh, it, it generated over 350 million yen in the domestic box office. Premiered back in 2018, February 4th. Prim- uh, produced by PA Works. You know, if, if we're talking about original shit, it's hard to look past PA Works. Uh, Mal score, 8.8. Four zero ranked one hundred and seventy five with a popularity of five two seven, just under four hundred thousand members. Oh, by the way, uh, when we we're talking about Buddy Daddies, remember I blew your mind that I said PA Work stands for Progressive Animation Works. Yeah, no one knows what PA stands for. It was hilarious. Okay, anyways, go and on. And this is progressive as fuck too, because my God, Makia is gorgeous. Now. Granted, this is like movie quality animation, so of course you would expect things to be a little bit prettier. But uh, quick no. question: How long is the movie? It's just under two hours. Okay, it's like an hour fifty something. Sure, like that. Like, just so that like our we, listeners get. I, a... I guess with without the credits, it'd be an hour fifty something like that. So sure, it, it's still like a, a decent length movie. You know? Like I think if it, nowadays like movies that are like up to two hours, that's pretty standard. I remember back like it you used know, to be 20... 90 minutes yeah right yeah, yeah 90 yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. you know but now it's like you know i think it's also because of the fact that back then like it was not all that expensive of buying movie tickets so like you just had like quick burn and churn movies so that you can fill as many screenings as possible in the day but now it's like if a movie isn't two and a half hours long then like what are you doing as so this is like a, a pretty good a decent length uh for a watch time for an enemy movie so the general story of this is uh, it revolves around the world of Iors, or essentially long living saintly beings that live a very, very peaceful life until war breaks loose. The humans come and take over their land and wipe everyone out, leaving just a handful of survivors for them to figure out whether to save what they've lost or whether to seek pastures anew. That's the general story uh, it follows, you know, a few different uh, characters, but one of which is, of course, the main focus, Magia, uh, a a lonely and very troubled Iorf who unfortunately gets separated from her group of long living Iorfs and has to navigate life on her own, but not for long, because then she stumbles upon a recently orphaned baby boy. Uh, called Ariel. 
uh, or at least that's what she gives the name to. Um, and they, she, she essentially just tries to live her life. She can't go back to her homeland anymore because it's been destroyed. The princess of the of, of their land has been taken prisoner uh, as a, a a prisoner bride, uh, and you know, the the leader of their army uh, has is nowhere to be found. And so she essentially essentially has to navigate her own life. She has to decide what she needs to do to be able to survive, but also taking care of this abandoned human baby boy. Uh, knowing so why fully- is that significant? Just just so the listeners can un- understand. The Iors are a group of saintly beings that live long. Think like, for example, like in high fantasy elves versus humans, where like an elf year could be like 50 to 100 human years or whatever the right, equivalent right, is. Right. In the same way where it's like here, Iors far like outlive uh, the standard human being life. Right. Uh, one question I do want to ask is, how old is she in relation to maturity within the like do they actually talk she's, about she's that? like they don't they ever like give age um but it's very clearly indicated in like the beginning where it's like she's young she's okay. like prepubescent like early teens like very much like oh shit yeah, she's she's very very young but in terms of like how that is compared like, like to human years or whatever that's like she she's basically an adult Got it. Right. But because of the fact that everyone else that she lived with is also like a long living IRF, she very much still acts like a the young kid. a young teen or like, okay. you know, a, a, a child still. Uh, just because that's that's literally it, right? When you are surrounded by other people who live just as long as you, you are still going to be a child. But when comparing it to a human They've lived maybe three, four times as long as a standard child slash teenager. I don't want to go any further into the story of the plot because that that's just giving away everything. What I will say though is that thank God I've watched stuff like Clanad because my God, this shit prepared me for what it means to be a very, very lonely young adult trying to be a pseudo parent and again it's not like clan is the only one there are lots of other series that talk about it you know Usagi drops coming up later on um but it's it really highlights the things that are super like frail and sensitive when it comes to raising families developing relationships being able to show care and protection for the ones that you love and how you deal with things that you couldn't protect in the first place it's a very emotional very very like like mentally euphoric movie because it just asks you questions that you know the answers are always going to be bad it's always going to trigger emotional senses in you or it's heavy it, it's it's super deep a lot of the movie is deep as heck you watched it yeah, so it's like no, oh, you I haven't have not watched it. However, someone once explained to me a long, long time ago, which is why I added it on my plan to watch in the first place. Was Jason? Don't you uh, like Makoto Shinkai? I'm like, yeah. I mean, that was when before your name came out, so it was a while, while back. He's like, didn't you give me the DVD copy of Voices of a Distant Star? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you like? Welcome to the NHK, and I'm like, I've heard of it before. I mean, I heard about it. I, I mean, I, I guess it's popular. It's like, if you combine both those shows, you kind of get something in the same vein as this movie. And I'm like, and I you, am sold. I will probably never watch it unless if I want to have a mental breakdown. But add, it is, a, add a twinge of wolf children in there, too. Holy fuck. Is it really that on the nose? It's it's rough. It's, it's rough watching a lot of times oh, in terms shit. of, like, the emotional journey that the main character, Makia, goes through. Because the fact that, like, if you really think about it, like, I'm not... A, a, is it a, a roller coaster of... Yes. Holy shit. Yes, it is. Is it, like, Fruits but Basket? It's, but it's, like... But the thing remake? is, it's, like... It's it's a roller coaster in the sense that you're on the ascend for like ninety minutes of the movie, and then there is that big drop when you reach the climax, and that's when like the waterworks starts like flowing. Well, what's the point of falling down if we do not learn how to get back up again? And and that's like, oh fuck, dude, that's pretty much like how how the how, how the general like message of the movie is. It's 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 very much like. 
watching a lot of those series where it's very family focused in the sense that you're trying to figure out like what what, what what's the most important thing you can do to be able to offer shelter care warmth protection for your loved ones especially the ones who are super vulnerable yeah just and, ask porter robinson right yeah man shelter uh and if you did if you then take that an extra layer and add in the fact that this main character lives basically forever fuck like but but everyone around her does not yeah so it's it, it's definitely so, like a hard hitting movie but when, it's so beautiful I am so happy you watched this film, Will, because when you read Fiera and Beyond's Journeys End, you are just going to get PTSD from literally all of this Damn. again. I, I can't say much more about Maki other than the fact that it is a, a very well-presented, okay. beautiful movie so, by PA Works. So, so okay, let, 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 let's talk about not the plot. How is... When it comes to these kind of... I wouldn't say tearjerker, but very emotional, driven kind of... Um, like movies right how the, is the, the voice the, acting the, the purpose is to, to compromise your emotions and see how you act based on whatever's on screen right like or or, or like conveying it in a way that is not like melancholy basically yeah. it's melancholy it, it, it is a fine line right so how is the voice acting perfect how it is, is is so is done so well balanced out with the orchestral music yes. as well it is like without going as far as calling it a 10 it's the perfect package it is very much worth your two hours. So it's a nine. It's it's that yeah. I I, I I it wasn't even like an eight and a half. It was a straight nine. I think I was eight and a half. Like maybe like halfway through, and then like in the end, I was just like no, like no debate. This is a movie that I can absolutely recommend to anybody if they're looking for a very emotionally draining, melancholic but very rewarding movie. It's 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 not all doom and gloom there's definitely a lot in this movie that shows that there's a silver lining that there is always going to be a crack of sunlight through these heavy clouds and i fully recommend watching makia i think i'm just going to keep this relatively short and sweet um and oh look at that we've, we've gone over two hours so we're actually not too light on the content um we, we do need more time to talk about the next two things though so okay last thing uh, on your end which is uh, the music composer is very well known. You know that, right? I, I actually didn't check at all. You know Ghost in the Shell? Oh, okay. Do that, you know Mob Psycho? That makes a lot of sense then. Do you know? I mean, list the names, it's, dude. It's, yeah. it's extensive. Uh, essentially, uh, Kenji Kawai is. Oh, okay. Uh, then, yeah. The, now, it's probably, now, now the name you said now. It's know. probably like if you take out uh, Sawano, if you take out. Hayashi, you take out Nobu Uematsu, I guess. He's pretty much high up there as well. He's like top 10 material in terms of greatest of all time music composers. And it shows. It, 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 Makia is a really, really good movie. I, I mean, when I first picked out the hat, I was like, ah, I don't know anything about this. And it was good. The look but, on my face was just, oh, God. Yeah, it was just like, it, we always try to go into this cleanup with as little expectation as possible because that way like you 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 can't like have any biases or any compromises like along the way you just basically go in empty slate consume and then give a review at the end and i'm glad to say that there is a massive like double thumbs of nine out of ten fucking recommendation for makia when the promise flower blooms uh Following up with the 9 out of 10 double thumbs up, let's drift over to my last cleanup drifters. Oh, the historical Royal Rumble. Oh, I, 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 when I, when you drew this out of the hat, I was incredibly happy as well. And I'm incredibly happy that I got it, okay? Drifters. Uh, drifters. Let's, let's talk about drifters. Based on of the ongoing manga. I did not know it was ongoing still. Yeah, I thought it was, I, I thought it was like done, like completely done. But apparently it wasn't. Um, on the ongoing manga, maybe it's like on hiatus, I guess, for a long time, of Kota Hirano, who did the story and the art published in English by Dark Horse Comics. For Jesus. Premiered in fall 2016, produced by Hood's Dra Drifters Studio. I feel the need to say this. The opening is sung by Gospel of the Throttle. There's a remix version by Min uh, it, Minutes to Midnight. Yeah. 
Uh, the Mal anime score is 7.90, rank 724, popularity 367, 533k members. Mal score for the manga 7.81229, rank popularity 427. Okay. I don't even think you need to really talk about like the characters and the plot. No, you, you Will, just just look, straight up like Will. What are the vibes, dude? What's I, the situation with drifters? I am extremely mad. Okay, you uh, angry at drifters? I no, I I I mean, I I'm just very mad and frustrated at a lot of things about this, which is in a world where drifters exists, we have a second season of Records of Ragnarok. We have the manga that we love of Record of Ragnarok. But we also have two seasons of the anime. Is the second season still done by Grafinica? Yes. Yeah. And how is it possible? This It frustrates me because this is in many ways what Record of Ragnarok could have been. Drifters is very much in the same vein of a, a, a weird eclectic mix of heroes against another group of people and add in jazzy soundtrack, which I, somehow just works. You add in the most amount of blood by the leader, by the bucket load. Add in the most amount of like thick tone lines of your character outline that I've ever seen ever. Especially there is, let's just say, a guy sitting at a desk with a newspaper and the like the how thick those lines are drawn on his like of his face and his like body is just like ginormously thick. Also I, I, the op- I, I the opening it, yeah. is just fucking amazing opening. It is not like super like crazy hype in your face, but it's just so catchy it's and a it's, mood. Yeah. it's just so good. It that's why it frustrates me that in many ways this was done before record of I would even argue Record of Ragnarok was was inspired in some way from Drifters. Or at least it 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 would boggle my mind if 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 it didn't. Because the premise is like it's it's way too similar. It's way too similar. But, Albeit, of course, one's held in the Coliseum, the other one is more like a literal Royal Rumble. Yes. It's it's straight up like history based Super Smash Bros. I just have to say if there was a Yandere Kudere pair, okay, and let's just say they belong on uh, the enemy side. That's all I'll say. Fantastic pair. Uh, especially the Yandere, let's just say. It's just Primo, a fun time. So good. It's a fun time. The characters are like done well, voiced well. Animation is solid. Extremely solid. Have you watched a movie we'll call Pacific Rim? Uh, no, but I know enough about Pacific Rim. There is a monologue that plays towards the end of the movie, the first one. Uh, Itris Alba talks about, like, kind of rouse up the troops. And then he says a very infamous, well, not infamous, a very well-known line that's meme to death. And I will just say it. Uh, you can spoiler. You can just fast forward ten seconds from now. Okay, he says, "Today's the day that we cancel the apocalypse," and in essence, that is drifters with the hype and the gusto and the balls and the energy and just. I did not know that you can talk about shit for an entire episode. And have it mean multiple things, literal, metaphorical. And you might think that I'm lying. You might think that I'm spoiling it. But you have no idea that there's no way I can spoil it despite what I have already said. Because you're not prepared. But you will watch it. Because it is just so good. It's just not a 10 out of 10. But it is the strongest 9 ever, in my opinion. It's so fucking good. And I, I, I agree that, like, of course, like, I didn't give it a 10 out of 10. I think I gave it a 9 as well. And it just simply because, like, 10s hold a very, very, very special place in my heart. But it's also if 
like I they just happen to. If sorry, I sorry. If I happen to just have it playing in the background, or if I'm like going over to someone's place and like they're, I'll, I'll be like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah, I'll be like, "Let me just sit down with my drink." Sorry, whoever's talking to me right now. I'll get your number later. I need to watch what is on this screen. I think that's it, right? Is there anything else we need to say about drifters? Yes. One other thing, the comedy is surprisingly good in a way that i thought would be like in a way when i saw it i thought it'd be like just a dumb knucklehead like, like, comedy and right? very jarring but actually it kind of blends the pace of the blood and the guts and the adrenaline as like kind of like hey let, let's 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 make a joke here and there and it, it pretty much always sticks the landing and it kind of gives you a moment to rest in between and it also comes down to like the creator essentially picking the right characters to put into this world of drifters like and here's the thing the art style of drifters kind of looks like records of ragnarok i'm just saying yeah they kind of look like the valkyries from records of ragnarok and i, I think like that would be the one that is like probably the most noticeable on the fence thing for people because it's 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 definitely an art style that like i'm totally fine with i'm totally totally fine fine with but you can imagine there's going to be people that are like man this is like drawn a bit rough you know let me tell you though we need to put everyone in drifters in an insane asylum and lock the (laughs) lock the door i don't care what side you're on or if you're a bystander you just go in this building lock the doors bar it bury it throw away the key burn it melt it and don't 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 interact with these people because you will die bro yeah they're fucked up all of them no joke they're all psychos but the anime that was rock solid really good you should all watch it and understand what record of ragnarok could have been in my opinion yep and that's uh you know with uh the Easter season really, really rolling up close. We're going to end our cleanup discussion with... Drop it like it's hot, Will. Usagi Drop, or Bunny Drop, the anime. I have to emphasize, we're talking about the anime, not the manga. And we'll get into that, too. So, just a little bit of a cleanup in terms of some stats and uh, some details about uh, Usagi Drop. It is a adaptation from the original manga of the same name, uh, that was done by Yumi Unita, both story and art. English uh, publication done by uh, Yen Press. So that would be known as Bunny Drop. Uh, as of uh, I think it ran between 2010 and 2014. Uh, was the was a candidate for the Eisner Award in 2011 for the best U.S. edition of international material, the Asia category. That's a very specific category. Um, it premiered in summer 2021. Produced by production ig oh which the cops are coming to get you bro yeah that's why right as soon as i said like oh oh you're not talking about the manga okay cool cool cool. we'll, we'll call this off uh it premiered in summer 2011 yeah. well yeah so uh mal score 8.36 uh 202 for the ranking 417 for the popularity and again just under half a million members on my anime list now the manga source i think is important to mention though Yes, because as a disparity from the anime, the score for the manga is a seven point one three. So eight point three six for the anime, seven point one three for the manga. Like one point two three apart, which is vast. Most of the time, it's, it's like the other way around, though. Yeah, usually. and also like if it's it'll be around, it would also only be like a couple decimal points. It might not be like that far apart. But for this one being like like very good to great. And then, like, the manga score being, like, just barely good. There's a reason for that. Produced by Production yeah, IG. which you mentioned already, until the fucking cops decided to rain in my parade. Um, so, we're talking about the anime specifically because that's the one that everybody should consume. If you had unfortunately read the manga... Which is okay until a certain point. Yeah. So, what is it all about? It's about a young man... A young man in his thirties, which is kind of crazy because Cause we're both in our <laughs> we're both a young guy in our thirties. Will right? Yeah, his name is a Daikichi Kawachi. Okay, that's none of 
neither of our names. No, no. Neither of us are Japanese either, unfortunately. Um, so, <laughs> young bachelor working in a decent, respectable job, but otherwise doesn't have as much sort of direction in his life. Uh, unfortunately, uh, family tragedy. His family, his, his grandfather suddenly passes away, and therefore he returns back to his family home to pay respects. Okay, Unbeknownst okay. to him, though, there is a random stranger that's frolicking around uh, the family home. All Why is she frolicking around, though, Will? She is... A young girl. Okay, she's so like, she's like five or six, like very, very, very young. So and, she, so she's like a little girl. She is at a funeral. She might not even understand the gravity of the situation. So what's wrong with that? She is unfortunately not family, or at least not known to be family. An initial okay, especially because so why is that an issue? Because it turns out that this is not just any random girl. This is actually somebody's daughter. This is the illegitimate daughter of. The recently deceased grandfather. Who is uh, Daichi's dad? Yes. Uh, on the uh, mom's Daikichi, side. Daichi, sorry. Daikichi, on the mom's side, I believe. Uh, but either way, that technically makes this young little girl his aunt. Yes. So, Long story yeah. short, um, she has nowhere to go. He's like, all right, I guess I'll take her in with no idea how to raise a child he's single he has work so ensues the life of a young single father or at least you know a father that's taken in as you know their unofficial Rin-chan. guardian their, yeah yeah rin chan is a uh, rin is name is the name of the girl yeah the un, uh, the the unofficial guardian of this young girl um it's it's good again that i've watched a lot of these kinds of series, um, particularly you know the the Kyoani types, because it basically it, it's also actually kind of like fitting that like I watched Makia uh, afterwards as well because they they both kind of have kind of similar plot, similar like child tones. raising the, the 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 frailties and difficulties of raising a family that you don't belong to. And also trying to figure out what the best interest is of this individual when really you shouldn't have any bearing on them whatsoever because you don't have that blood connection. You don't have that familial connection. Yes, in this sense, this person is your grandfather's daughter. So, of course, they are connected by family, but you've never met this girl before. And she has no idea in terms of what's going on. She knows that her papa is dead, but she also has no connection to her birth mother. And therefore, she's thrown. She's she's flung into the situation where, you know, so graciously, this 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 young man decided that he's going to take up the responsibility of caring for her, without even knowing if he's physically and mentally capable of doing so. And so, the rest of the series, it's a relatively short series because Raiden it is a curve, but it's only only eleven episodes. So those episodes go quite, go by quite quickly because each episode focuses on a particular instance or accident uh, that um, that happens on the kind of like daily basis. This is almost like the sort of like Nichijou-esque type of, um, of, of slice of life. It is, would you say, it's, it, it's not really an Iyashike, is it? No, I, I, right? I, I consider it a slice of life. Yeah, because there, there may be some elements of healing, but that's like more derived from the building of the relationship yeah. between the two like characters. It's more wholesome than yeah. Yashike, because I would say he and uh, uh, Daikichi encounters, you know, parental like lessons to how to raise Rin. And Rin is also very adorable. So I would say it's more of like uh, that kind of, like wholesomeness versus, oh, I feel like my life is okay again and healed and full, like rested up to max. Yeah. And funny enough, right? Like in a way where like you would have expected there to be educational value in Nobunaga Concerto, but there wasn't any, you wouldn't have expected a whole lot of like real life lessons of, you know, this, this, this goofy uh, bachelor raising an unknown child, but you actually take on a lot of learnings and advice from, how this dude tries to be a father figure for this young girl. It's it's very wholesome, very touching in terms of seeing somebody giving unconditional love to somebody that really, like, should not to say they don't deserve it, but 
it's it's it, it's not it's like, like it's not he's yeah. not required to do it but he does it anyways yeah and it, and throughout the series as well you always have characters that are being like the fuck are you doing are you sure you want to do this are you fucking insane you can't even take care of yourself but no like you know against all odds against everyone's advice he decides this is the thing i'm going to do and it's not so much him trying to prove a point. It's not him trying to show that he's a man and whatnot. This is just somebody that's looking at another human being and thinking, you don't have shelter. You don't have guidance. You don't have care and warmth. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to do the best I can to be able to provide that in lieu of you not having a father and a mother figure in your life. And it's, it's, it's a really good series. I give it a nine in the end. Okay. What do you think of the art style? It's fine. It's decent. It, it, it reminds yeah. me of Skip and Low for a bit. Yeah, I think that like it, it, it it's very much like like it, simple it, drawn. It, it's kind of weird to say that like, it's a very slice of life like style. But yeah, it's it's soft, right? It's light. It's not got a lot of like harsh like color palettes. I bet a lot of the the the, the colors are kind of like off white, off blue, off green. It's like it's it, you if you see green, it's not like a very like light green. You know how it reminds me of that scene. I keep, I don't know why today we are both mentioning a lot of live action movies. You know the first Ocean's 11 like the the George Clooney Brad Pitt one and they talk about the color in the hallway of uh, a casino. It's like a certain shade of green. Yeah. It reminds me of what we're just discussing like don't you like it's kind of gives you that like soft tone kind of vibe. It's it's not like visually striking in terms of like having deep reds or dark blues or just like harsh contrasts in right. color. Like it's not visceral, it's not striking. It's just like Yeah, I, it, I know what you're trying to say. It's comfortable, it's easy on the eyes. And I think it's because of the fact that like you are dealing with a relatively deep and serious topic of what it actually means to be a single parent or at least a single guardian. And also based on the child themselves being like recently orphaned and, you know, knowing full well that you have family, but these are, these are family members that you've never met before that you have no emotional or familial connections with. And just seeing like how the two characters come together and actually operate as a, "Quote unquote family," because they really have no like family connection other than the fact that they both share the same grandfather slash father. So it's 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 cute. It's very well done. The voice acting is is perfect, especially when it comes to the children, because it it, it definitely highlights a lot of that innocence, but also fear and like uncertainty in terms of who they can trust, who they can confide in. But once they do find that tr- trust, you can hear the warmth come back in their voices. All right. Now, here's the problem. There's a reason why there is a massive score disparity between the manga and the anime. Because whilst the anime, you know, does I, a very, very I good gave, job in being wholesome and comfortable. And, I consumed the yeah. all the specials, all of it. Gave them all pretty much nines. I think the specials, I gave it an eight. But highly, highly agree with what Will has said about the anime. The manga, on the other hand. So, I don't know if we want to actually say why we are so hesitant or why there is a big disparity in scores between the manga and the anime. All we'll say is that it is incredibly controversial. And very, in my opinion, very frustrating. Because this is the direction you choose to go with the storyline of these two characters. Let's let's just say that to my knowledge, and again, I might be missing stuff because I didn't actually read the manga. 90% of the entire manga, because it's finished, is pretty much exactly how you would expect the anime to be. Maybe it's a bit more serious. Maybe I don't know. But to my knowledge, it is mostly the same. Then there is the last chunk that is the thing that actually caused the, the, all of this. The big, the biggest of red flags. In which case, like... Yeah, let's just leave it at that. How about that? Let's not just go into spoilers or talk about that. Because yeah. I think, A, that's not necessarily fair to the anime. But, but at the same time, it's such a deep topic that 
it might exactly. actually be better served as a BP because yeah, or be, yeah, or 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 like that is not something that we should discuss like two and a half hours in, is what I'm saying. But and also we have prompt you guys if you do want to find out, I can tell you that you might not want to find out. That's yeah. all I will say because it might ruin it. But if you are curious, by all means, go for it. We are giving you a trigger warning. Yes, and we are telling you in advance without telling you. Just don't – if if you feel like, hey, you don't want to know, good. All right? It, it's, it's, it's sad to say that about the manga because for sure it's like the, the mangaka like created this and hopes to be able to profit and benefit from it. But we as the good anime palette can only endorse the anime. Or like eighty percent of the manga, I guess, but I can't even say that because I actually didn't read the manga. So, but but the anime for sure. Yeah, it's, anime it's, is rock solid. It's it's the safest and also the best choice. All right, and that is all of our cleanups for our uh, our GAP anime closet cleanup. Well, how did you feel? Yeah, I would be actually very interested when I'm timestamping this. See, like how much time we spent actually talking about each individual series. I thought we were going to be talking a lot more about Makia and Drifters and 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 uh, Usagi, but it's also like we're just saying the same things over and over. It's like it's good, it's great, it's it it, it fits and and does what it's supposed to do. But then like when talking about stuff like Alt Noah Zero, talking about uh, High School DxD and all that, like there was a lot of sort of back and forth in terms of like what was good, what was not, and also what was wacky and insane about those series. Yeah. I think all in all, the whole point of cleanups is not only to lit- like literally clean up our plan to watch lists, but to have a weird combination of shows that kind of is a mixed bag in a li- very literal sense, right? So there's always going to be in a mixed bag, by definition, winners and losers – in 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 that sense, there's never a guarantee, right? Like that's why we do these. Is it's because of the fact that like when you put something on your plan to watch, it definitely piqued your interest in the first place. And in, you know, with this particular series, we hope to at least be able to alleviate any sort of concerns you might have going to a show, or at least further reinforce why you should take it off your plan to watch and start watching it. So, will. We actually have a tentative list for our anime closet cleanup five, yeah, right? Which you know we we could have done the pick today, but we don't have to rush into it. But I think yeah, it would be good to maybe sort of just run through uh, the current uh, list that we have slated for the upcoming uh, closet cleanup, which would be cleanup number five. So on my side again, from my plan to watch list, Jason has picked for me Akamega Kill, Akira, Doctor Otsumasu. Sara, uh, Sara Zanmai and Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight. From his plan to watch list, he has drawn out for me a lull in the sea given just because the perfect insider and wave listen to me, which I'm very comfortable with any of those because I know enough about them uh, to have wanted to check them out in the first place. And then for my cleanup list, from Will's plan to watch list, he has given me Perfect Blue. Dimension W, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, Stars Align, Wataten, uh, An Angel Flew Down to Me. And then from my plan to watch list, I got Batum, A Centaur's Life, Bastard with two exclamation marks, which is I think that Netflix uh, fantasy rock and roll heavy metal one. Dance Dance Dancer and Paprika. Okay. Well... How many seasonal bets have I won? Uh, all of them. Right. Which is how many? Like uh, Four, I believe. Let's minus one right now, and I'm going to choose all of our picks right now. You ready? Okay. You ready? I mean, I'm just going to pick them right now, so you, we might as well write them down, right? Oh, wait. You're, we're going to make an executive decision on the spot. For For what? The actual cleanup. As in, like... I I am proposing live while I'm recording, if you permit, spending one of my seasonal bet wins to pick all of our cleanup picks of my choosing 
right now. No. But what mm-hmm. I will do is instead you can use them to select one from your plan to watch lists. So from my bucket, I because you know we have like one from mine, one from yours, and the same for you, right? Right. You can pick up the stuff that's already in your plan to watch lists, but be drawn. But I can't I can't pick it from you? Yeah. So you can basically so, so so from my side. So so by spending one of my four, yeah. What are you proposing? Actually, yeah. What, what did you what did you you wanted, you wanted to pick all four, like regardless of all what, eight, all eight. Pick four. I'd say pick four. Okay. How about this? Just just okay, one from if, each bag. It, okay. If I pick four, can I choose which of the four? Yeah. As in four from you or four from me or two two or whatever. However right? you want to do it, you can do it like. One from my list, one from your list for me, and then one from your list, one from my list for you, or however it be. But let's keep it the four because we still do want to do a little bit of a draw. Have a little bit of, like, excitement and okay. randomness in there, too. I like that idea, actually. Yeah, actually, that, that would have been a great idea. Yeah. To still have some sort of unpredictability in there. You know what? Okay. Then I'll spend it. Okay. Uh, m- minus one from my four yeah. seasonal bet wins, okay? Okay. From Will's cleanup list, from Will's plan to watch list, can you guess which one, Will? Uh, it's going to be Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight, right? Boom. From Will's cleanup list on my side. Personally, I would. I would Perfect go with... Insider. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was either that or Wave Listen to Me. I thought you were going to be given. Nah, I'm not trolling. I actually do want to know how you. Think about the perfect insider and wave listen to me. Okay. Um. So, so you, I, I I would say I would spend either one of those. Is there any one that you could do both if you want? No, no, no. Because I only said one. Wave listen. No, perfect insider. Because I okay. know enough about. Yeah. I, I know. I know. Fuck all about perfect. Okay. Insider. That, uh, and that's believe it or not, that's perfect. Yeah. Um. Then from my list, my cleanup list from my plan to watch. Toilet Bound, Hanako Kun. I think that's one of those shows that we've heard a lot about. Yes, and yeah. and I kind of just want to know what it is. It means it's not my first choice from my from your plan to watch side, but I think it's the one that I'm the most curious about with a good amount of background information. From mine, though, I have. I kind of want to pick the last two. One of the last two. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. You know which one. one I want you to pick, and it's not... Da- it's, dance, dance, dancer. Yeah, okay, let's go. One. Let's go. That's the one. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's do it. You're going to have a good time. I'm sure... No, I, I mean, with that or Paprika, I know I'll have a good time either way. Well, one's it's just, also, do one, I... It's, it's like, do I want to smoke... Do I want to look like I smoked salvia, or do I want to look like jacked out of my goddamn mind? It's going to be amazing when you've done these, these picks, and it's a one in four chance... Or one in sixteen to get both, but if you end up actually drawing perfect blue and paprika for your cleanup. Hey, this is coming from uh the GAP records of getting honey and clover and uh yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? Like, Come on. That was that was literal by chance. And I'm glad you watched both of them. And they're both great. Yeah. I need to finish them though. But they're legit good. So I think that's it then. We have now uh, run up our episode. We've done a quick kind of pick for our uh, anime closet cleanup number five. Yeah, I, I wanted to yeah. surprise you a bit with the with because I was just like, might as well make use of your wins, right? Well, not just that, but I actually thought some of these were like shows that I we, we and, should. And to be fair, it's also like we've always had those missed opportunities, right? Like how many times have we had Monte Cristo in our picks and never gotten? Them? So we talked about that, I think, for our future BP. And I'm saying it now that we are going to put it back on the cleanup list. But it's we were just yeah. like, hey, maybe we should just let it chill for a bit. <laughs> yeah. So I knew that I couldn't pick that. I, I was going yeah, to, though. Just, just put it on ice for now, right? Put Monte Cristo on ice. Uh, put Sekano on ice. There's a lot of series that are, that are on there. Uh, well, not you know. You have, you have yeah. yeah. That's why we didn't have any carryovers this time around because we just wanted a fresh start. That's it the same with me, too. I literally just like looked into like – a, a clean slate uh, for for the picks on your side. At the end of the day, though, before I go into housekeeping, 
I do think our cleanup four list, though, is still extremely good. Regardless of how we felt about it, I am extremely glad, and I do genuinely mean this, that we went through these shows. I think it's like, as much as I didn't enjoy watching Fully Cooley, I can at least see the impact that it has on the anime industry and the community. And I'm also super happy that I finally got around to watching Usagi Drop because it's wholesome fun. And Makia was like the biggest surprise on my side. Like, I fucking love Makia. I, I'm legit glad. Okay. So that is the end of episode number 55 of the GAP podcast. You can always reach us through our Gmail, gapallet at gmail.com. That's G A P A L E T T E. All lowercase, all one word. We have the handle at Palette Good, capital P and capital G, all one word. I think uh, Will and I might be a bit more active on those fronts just to kind of get some conversations going, but we'll see how that goes. Um, also, through our GAP Discord, uh, invite link is so just is in the show description and our website. I promise I'll try to update it as fast as I can when we get everything all sorted on those uh, stuff. It's www.goodanimepalette.com. All lowercase, all one word. Music credits for this episode. Since I don't know if Will would put in the break music, I will say them anyways because they're awesome. The intro music is Inure by Hasten. Our break music is Botai by Oi. And our outro music is I Don't Mind the Instrumental Version by Particle House. You can always support the music artists that we feature by listening to them on Spotify, Apple Music, or other various music listening platforms. And our royalty-free music was provided by Epidemic Sounds. If you're interested in using Epidemic Sound, you can use the referral link that is in our show description. Terms and conditions apply. What also is going to apply is Will and I's opinion on the spring 2023 seasonals, which I think would probably be the next EP, right? Yeah, we're, we're doing episode 56, uh, a spring premiere for 2023. Um, I'm very, very hesitant to see how I'm going to perform in this season's bet because look, I, it, I have a terrible track record. What else am I going to say? No, no, I still think... You have a very good shot. Like no, no, I'm, I'm not being like trolling. You know, Demon Slayer and Hell's Paradise is going to be hype. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely some safe stuff there, uh, but you never know, right? There's there, there might be, for example, like Demon Slayer might tank. It, it won't, but you you can never guarantee anything until you actually see the concrete scores by season's end. Um, at least Oshinoko has a score. That's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, I think because it, it did did it debut last night. In terms of recording, I don't uh, know. It uh, I I think it debuted March uh, it, it, April first or something. Like yeah, so like today and, or yesterday or and something. And it had that early screening, right? Yeah, it had that early screening. I think mid March. It has a seven point seven five. It was a seven point one two at one point, and I texted Will, and he was like, "The." F- fuck is this bullshit? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, maybe just people are too smooth brain to enjoy it. On the other hand, though, Hypnosis Mike Season 2 hype train. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe we should finish Season 1 then. Hey, if you can watch Season 1 and not come out with your with brain damage, I mean... It's not that bad. Come on. Come on.